Welcome to the Rebel Love Show. We are a once a week broadcast from Manchester, New Hampshire, where we are pro pot, pro gun, and pro coffee. You can find all of our content on iTunes and Stitcher and uh, YouTube. I am Rob Mathias. And I'm Shire Dude. And today we have two great guests. First off, we got uh, Brian Sovereign here of Sovereign Tech. Hello, hello. And then we have Stephanie Murphy of, uh, of Pork Therapy. Thank you. I guess that's <laughs> how you know me, huh? Yes. That's exactly how I know you. I was going to say, I'm Shire, dude. Oh, you got the glasses <laughs> for it. <laughs> yeah, if you want to see the, the Stephanie Murphy's, uh, if you want to see her glasses, uh, we've got the studio cams going. And they're at shiredude.com. You just go there, click on the big Rebel Love Show logo, and you'll see all our beautiful faces. Shire, dude, I have to say, I saw your blooper reel for It's Like This Too. That was really funny. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now, now, wait a second. I See, when, I, when we were asked to be on the show, I thought it was the Rebel Hate show. <laughs> I did not sign up for the Rebel Love show, but I guess I'm here. So, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we might as well do it. <laughs> yeah, what the hell? <laughs> oh, we could use some more haters. On, yeah, no. we don't have <laughs> enough haters on this show. Yeah, yeah our haters are, uh, we need to get a little bit more of those. I no. got to tell you about my, about my hater. Rob, you say you're like a, like an online dating site activist. I'm a Tinder activist. A Tinder activist. Yeah. Okay. I had an experience where I sent a message to a girl on OkCupid. Okay. And she replied, like, before, the message was like, hi, how's it going? Like, we might have some stuff in common. Let's talk. And she replies, like, she must have known who I was, or I don't know how exactly she knew, but she replied, if you ever abandon your deeply held political beliefs and realize the hypocrisy of the Free State Project, wow. then reply. <laughs> <laughs> That's so fringe. Like, I, I think I'm fringe. Yeah, <laughs> I think I'm free. Anne would have had words yeah. for her <laughs> yeah. when I'm talking about being a free stater, but she's like a free state hater. That's crazy. Yeah, I haven't met any of those yet on uh, OKC or Tinder give it some time. Like yeah, um, I've, I've run it. Well, no, I've run into a I was couple. Rather discouraged. Know. I mean, I don't like I'm not exactly super public or anything. I mean, I've been a podcaster and stuff, but um, yeah, I'm not. It's not exactly like I'm out there, you know, smoking pot with my top off or anything or. Yeah, no, I, I get you. I get you. I actually, the only in, in uh, situation I had similar to that was about a year ago uh, on OKC. I ended up matching with someone who happened to be like a uh, an aide to Governor Hassan, like in her office. Wow. Ooh. Yeah, and we started talking about like you know, like we friend each other on Facebook, and she saw that I blocked for free key, and like all of a sudden we just became to a huge like debates about politics, and then she blocked me. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, wah, wah. I don't know, it wouldn't do anything for me. I mean, you, you got to figure anybody like that's into domination, right? You know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm not if you're into the state. Like <laughs> All right. Um, but uh, we had uh, some, uh, a little bit of, uh, I don't know, housekeeping, but uh, a lot of things have happened in the last week. So we kind of want to do the first segment just to start off with uh, what's been going on oh, here. Oh, we in totally Manch. ruined it. Sorry. No, you didn't ruin it. No, no, no. <laughs> Again, it's a hangout show. We can go wherever it goes in the conversation. Um, but, uh, we, uh, well, Shire dude created an event that we did on this, uh, Sunday. Oh, the pub crawl. Yeah. The pub crawl. Yeah. We called it the rubble love pub crawl. And, uh, you described it, Rob, you described it as a, it was, it? it was a porcupine's wet dream. <laughs> Cause we started with the 420 rally in, uh, the park in Manchester. Which okay. They don't usually do them in Manchester. You know, they do them in King. Uh, and then we went to Murphy's. Wait a minute. Then, you just glossed over what happened oh, at the 420 yeah. oh, rally. That, that wasn't like, even the biggest part. That was just yeah, like, yeah, we went like, and smoked. No, yeah, okay. So people smoked pot in the people park. Smoked yeah. pot people hold signs. Openly. Wait, did any cops come? They, they were, circled around. Give us the details. Cops were circling the park. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but they, they didn't, didn't approach? They cars, though. Yeah. Well, none of us were approached. They didn't bug us at all. So was it, how obvious was it that you were smoking pot? It's pretty obvious. We're all standing in a circle, you know. Smoke plumes coming out. We had a few joints going around. How many people yeah. were at this? Uh, what, 12, 15? It wasn't a huge See, amount. The portion but, wasn't huge. Yeah, but so they, it, it picked up from there. Like yeah. at one point, there was over 40 different people. Did you uh, bring ice cream? Crawl. <laughs> no, but you see, the thing is, we should have planned that yeah, yeah. for earlier today. Yeah, yeah. I know. The free ben ice cream at Ben Jerry's. Yeah. Right. yeah. I mean, that line was, it didn't stop. <laughs> it I thought there was the a Star Wars movie coming out. I was like, episode seven's coming. This is going to be great. I well, would, then you thought that they were lined up for the fried chicken, right? Yeah, that's what I thought at first, but 
then they're, I'm not going to make that joke. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I went, I went for a run earlier this morning. I saw that huge line outside Ben and Jerry's. I'm like, it oh, must be free ice cream today. But that would have been perfect for a 420 rally route outside Ben Jerry's. Right. Oh, yeah. It would have looked great. <laughs> Pictures <laughs> alone. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then we went to uh, Murphy's, right? Right, and they accept Bitcoin. They have that Bitcoin ATM in the bar or in the front of the bar. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. so we went there, bought some pints with Bitcoin, which, you know, that's not something you can do most places. And then from there, we went to uh, Strange Brew. Yeah, home to the world's longest running Bitcoin meetup. So, so Murphy's has both a Bitcoin ATM and they accept Bitcoin in exchange for their drinks? Yeah. Right. Okay, so if you go there with, with FRNs in your pocket, you turn them into Bitcoin, and then you, use that, you then use that Bitcoin to buy a drink. Yeah. They're cashing in twice from the fee on the ATM, plus they're getting your Bitcoin. Yeah, it's a good business model for them. So why would you not <laughs> just spend your worthless FRNs at their bar directly? <laughs> it's just the idea of getting Bitcoin uh, in... Uh, yeah, it's maybe it's cool just drawing them yeah, in the cool or something. Factor being, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. a novelty factor being able to buy uh, you know, a pint with Bitcoin. Like there's a pizza place here, which happens at Pizza 911, which uh, now accepts Bitcoin. Uh, you know, it's a cop-themed pizza place, which is really weird. Right, it's called Pizza 911. Yeah, and they accept Bitcoin. It was just like... That seems to be antithetical, but maybe not. Yeah, yeah. Well, one of the, the, one of the guys that used to work there was um, a uh, big advocate of Bitcoin, so he got that like going in there, which is cool, but it's like a unique thing like mm -hmm. in Manchester that there's multiple places that accept Bitcoin, but very randomly places, I guess you can say. Um, but yeah, we had over 40 people. At over one point. 40 at its peak for this pub crawl that I planned in like a single night. It's just someone posted a Facebook status like, hey, we should have a Manchester pub crawl. And I'm like, okay. And uh, it turned out great. I mean, you can't. And it's like a I will say, I will say this: that this pub crawl, else. that pub crawl was more fun than the Free Coast Festival pub crawl, <laughs> by far. <laughs> wow! wow. Sure, <laughs> just like giggling That's over bold. here. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was it was more fun. I mean, than we didn't charge so, admission. So this I, is we the rebel hate admission. show. <laughs> <laughs> no, we already have hate out there. So <laughs> that's uh, that's that's already been in place. Uh, Kind of a funny thing happened at the 420 portion of it. Somebody mistook me for uh, Mike Vine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was, there was a, I don't see how that can happen. There was like a, either a new mover or something. You should have just ran with it. You should have been like, yeah, yeah, I'm Mike Vine. Yeah. Hey, you don't set my This is my wife, off. Vanessa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, and then uh, yesterday, no, yesterday, was that this morning? When was that? Yesterday? Where am I? I don't know, Are you man. You talking about going to court? I, I'm thinking of, I'm thinking about court. Yeah, is that today? That was today. Uh, today's been a long, been a long day. It's been a long week. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you went to uh, court today, right? So I'm challenging uh, three parking tickets that I got during uh, winter because you know the crazy Manchester like parking bans that go. Oh on. yeah, you got to be on one side of the street, right, and all that nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and you know stuff happens. So I got these parking tickets, and so now my goal is to take them to trial, just so I can try to get the judge to let me pay um, like a private charity as opposed to the city of Manchester. Right. right? I figure that's the best I can do to kind of mitigate. You know. Kinda, How much are the parking tickets for? They're, they're uh, 25 each. And how many do you have? I have three. Okay. So yeah. 75 bucks is on the line. Right. Plus your bucks. time and dignity. Right, right. And, uh, you know, so we, we, we figured dudeness. might as well film it, right, while we're in court. Yeah. Yeah. Which was fascinating because somehow me printing, uh, well, not, not me, uh, Cecile back there. But uh, came in, went in with a press pass that said free keen on because we both blogged for free keen. Somehow this little press pass get, granted me some sort of extra rights to be standing in the courtroom holding a camera. If, I walked, if I walked in there as a normal human being, somehow that, this little magical document that we printed here in the studio <laughs> granted me some sort of magical powers inside this courtroom where they can't touch me with a camera. Yeah, you know, it's something I've actually I've recommended to people on my show is just have a press pass for whatever. I've got one from like the Universal Life Church and yeah, it just yeah, works. It, it, it works. They, they recognize <laughs> it for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, Sometimes badges do grant extra rights. <laughs> <laughs> that they do. We'll be back right after this. Yeah. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. I don't care about your music. Well, I guess I'll just do my first right here. You're taller than me. Okay. 
All right, how's uh, how's this sound? Is this better? Test, test, one, two, one, two, test, test. That's that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm adjusting the uh, aux knob, not the slider. Oh my God, I miss this so much. The voice <laughs> of God coming in. It's so cool. Sometimes he just jumps in our head. Yes. Sometimes, yeah, the prophet just goes inside our head. It's it's great. Hi, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead so and you test it. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Hello. Shire. It's, I think it's your mic technique. You're not speaking. Am right I not? Directly. Am I not munching? Yeah, there you go. Oh man. Good. Munching. Well, I also bumped oh. it up a little bit. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Is that, is that? All right. One, two, three. Rebel Love Show broadcasting out of Manchester, New Hampshire. Yeah. Shiredude.com. All right, go ahead. Bum, bum. Hey, all right, here we go on the break. All right, check, 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 check. Cool. Hello, it's the Rebel Hate Show <laughs> broadcasting from Keene, New Hampshire. <laughs> all right, go ahead. Pod Bay 2 Gay. Oh, I'm on the wrong show. <laughs> What show is that? <laughs> it's Derek J. He just kind of says it on whatever show he's on. <laughs> <laughs> the Golden Stallion, the man of tomorrow, here for an episode of the Rebel Love Show. All right, I'm turning it. Thanks, God. <laughs> okay. You could munch a little more, too. Yeah, I could munch a little more. Mm -hmm. I love it when a woman tells me. That. Right, yeah, I, have, I, I have both uh, ox, all three ox knobs, except for mine, almost uh, three fourths the way up. <laughs> Mine's halfway, but uh, I know my mic picks up a lot more than the others. All right, thanks, Nian. I kind of changed setup because now we have a uh, I set up a mix minus where we're finally. <laughs> I'm still learning everything sure, sure. on here. Mm -hmm. So like we finally just got it to where I can record the bumpers coming in. Ah. And I finally got it set up and now I'm not using the sliders, I'm using the aux knobs with it. So it's slightly changing the sound up. But no credit to you. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, still learning know, as I go. You got the same mixer I have. Almost every podcast team has yeah, a you know Behringer why? mixer. <laughs> why? Because it works? Yeah, it's a good mixer. For a hundred bucks, yeah. Yeah. Like I bought and that. Uh, there was this spreadsheet that went around. <laughs> I had a spreadsheet of all my equipment in my studio, and I was uh -huh. like one of the first people to build a, a home studio for broadcasting on LRN. Mm -hmm. And did you just turn my mic down? No, no. I turned the uh, LRN feed down a little bit, oh. just so we can I can hear you over the feed a little bit. Got That's it. All. I'm going to bump it back up when it comes back on. Yeah. So, so I built a home studio, and I made like a spreadsheet, and I gave it to Brett Dale. I listed all my equipment and then they ended up, you know, getting the same equipment and building a studio. And then Michael Dean heard about it and he had some additions to it. And so, um, yeah, there's like a, it's like a historical. I love how you're saying that during a Michael Dean commercial. <laughs> <laughs> it's a I'm sorry. Creamy D. Little creamy circle. D. Creamy D. Creamy D. You refer to him as the creamy D. His creaminess bless you. Yeah. <laughs> he actually helped out with this show when I yeah, when we first I went heard. live too, which was cool. Not live, but when we first started recording, he like helped me with all the audio, like changing settings. I was actually emailing him files back and forth for like over an hour, no, two hours. Welcome back to the Rebel Love Show. Uh, we got uh, Brian and Stephanie here, uh, and uh, you guys were fascinated. Well, I kind of brought it up. You guys were, you, you took it off the wall, and you put it down on the table here, a, uh, a contract that was signed. It's a historical document of this show. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is quite the thing. Now, uh, my first question is not necessarily what this contract is about, but what enforces this? No one. No. <laughs> <laughs> show them your blockchain. <laughs> <laughs> it, it basically in case it ever went to mediation or something like that, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, that we have a document to show that, you know, we weren't uh, going against it. That's all. Yeah, the so language, I have to say the language is pretty um, thorough. You know, it seems like it, it's met, it was trying to cover all the bases. What's the backstory on this? The backstory? Um, 
if you're ready to talk, because I know this is, you said this is something off the air that you haven't talked well, about. Well, we publicly. have never talked about who that is on the air. Okay. Um, so do you um, want to do, do the backstory without naming names or? Sure. I'll, I'll do the backstory without naming I'm names. I'm just curious. That seems fair. Yeah, that no seems judgment. fair. I, I won't drop names on it. <laughs> Basically, well, it, it's me, um, the former co host of this show. So everyone knows who Joel is. Um, and then another podcast team here in Manchester at the time. Um, and uh, her, their studio was broken into. They they lost multiple equipment that was damaged and whatnot. We were just starting up. You know, we're new kids on the block a year ago, and uh, we, you know, we we're already hanging out. And one night we knew each other, and they're like, you know, what, let's let's combine forces in studio. Uh, they only wanted to record once a week. I was fine with them coming because this is our home. You know, I live here. It's not just this is like you know uh, Ian's studio where it's like you know it's. It's in part of my home. It's not like I'm, I'm not balling where I got a whole other <laughs> studio somewhere else. Yeah, you know what I'm we, saying? We can relate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Almost every podcast yeah. team has a studio yeah. in their own home. Yeah. You know, and uh, anyway. So, okay, so you had, a, you had a home studio. They recently lost their home studio because they got broken into and they wanted to use your home studio? Well, they wanted to bring their equipment to combine forces. So like half the studio, um, I would say... Yeah, about half of it. Uh, those two mics right here, um, that mic we just recently bought um, to replace a mic that went out that was ours. But half the mics, the table, the acoustic foam, uh, they had a mixer, but I didn't need it because I already had a mixer. So, um, but uh, yeah, there's actually another sheet to that, which isn't right there, which was the whole inventory of uh, everything. It's actually behind. There's an addendum. It. Yeah. An of, appendix. Of uh, every single serial number and every single uh, item that came in. Um, and everything that went out. Um, yeah, we actually kind of had a, uh, we had a falling out over personal issues uh, pretty much three weeks into it. And uh, Wow, so it only lasted three weeks. Three weeks. Before they recorded three episodes in here. Okay. Yeah. I know. Well, they're, they're, what were, can you tell us more about the personal issues? The per oh, all right, let's go personal. I highly doubt they listen to this I mean, show, so it doesn't really matter. Know, right? <laughs> I know. But like everyone who's listening is like, ooh, what's Come the on, personal this, issue? The Rebel Hate Show. Tell tonight. us some go gossip. It. Right. <laughs> well, it's been a long time. I guess it's over a year anniversary since that was signed. So I guess it's it's about time we talk about it. Um a couple issues. They didn't like the cat, um, for one. And I mean I know you're I, mean, I know I you're allergic. You're I allergic, blame. but they weren't. And you know, Ash is our studio cat. That that was already known ahead of time. She's also our producer. Go like her on Facebook. Yeah, cat, cats are very lucky things in studios. Uh, I can say this: the Free Free Talk Live, their studio, they had a cat. They had a Ravage. Uh, I mean, it's it's a part of success. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, you have to have a, a studio animal of some sort or another. Right. You know, it seems like a thing that everyone does. Um, but uh, yeah, we uh, they wanted me to take the cat out of my home whenever they were recording. They wanted a key to the to my home whenever they uh, wanted to record, which I'm like, no, <laughs> you do not get full access to my home. You yeah, can come in that's here. That's a little of yeah, a security issue, yeah. potentially. Yeah. So, like, you couldn't just put like a nudity clause in this or anything? No. 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 Okay. Why would no. they put a nudity? Clause? Why would I? Why would I do that? We walk around nude here as it is. Like, I wouldn't put that in there. Well, yeah. Now, <laughs> nowadays, it's a new department. Yeah. Yeah. Most. Well, days, you, you yeah. got to worry. I mean, because you know, if somebody walks in, they have the key. They just walk in, and you know, you're nude. You know, it's your home, and you're nude. Uh, they could get you for who knows what. You know what I mean? Right. They shouldn't have walked in. Yeah. Well, right. They shouldn't have walked in. But I, yeah. Anyway, go go for it. That and on top of that. Part of the one of the people that lived here was dating someone that that person hated. That was a whole other situation on top of that. But the big thing was she wanted to record at a time that we recorded, which was known prior to. Um, and we offered like multiple days where like it was every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday they could record it at any uh, point in time. They could record it anytime uh, after eight. Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, except for Wednesday, we recorded, and then all day Thursday, all day Friday, all day Saturday. That wasn't good enough. Wow. Yeah. And yeah. then and then that got dragged out. That got dragged out. The negotiations for that, there's a Facebook group chat, which became like the negotiation. Whenever we ran into each other in person, which is not hard to do here in Manchester, um, we never talked about it in person anymore. It was the, everything happened via the Facebook chat. So because it was, that you was got the negotiations. It in writing. Yeah. It was all it's in all writing. in writings. Yeah. Yeah. I can go back to that chat and bring up everything that was in there. Yeah, okay. See, so the, there's so, an old rule, real quick. There's an old rule in podcasting it's host before hose. And that, <laughs> that clearly was not being followed here. We, so, 
well, for, like for me, like one Who thing. Who are you calling a hoe? <laughs> <laughs> I can't figure it out. Well, like for me, it's like, you know how people say, don't start a band. Don't start a podcast. Like the <laughs> amount of drama that I've gone through getting this show just to where it is now is beyond belief. Like going through all that, that lasted till August. And that was signed in April. That was literally, that lasted all the way to the end of August and negotiations. And how many Shire years is that? That man? was like two Shire years worth oh, of uh, negotiations. <laughs> it lasted forever, like forever. There, there are some contracts I wish died after like three months. That'd be great. But well, <laughs> what was crazy was we offered to, um, we bought our, we bought them out, which we did. Uh, so you bought their the remaining equipment that they had. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we basically started it off where like, look, this isn't working. We still want the equipment. Like th this contract was till November, so theoretically she could they could have came back and the got the equipment. So the agree then. so the original agreement, just so it's clear, was that they would give you their remaining equipment, or they would combine it with yours if the they could be recorded. The, the original agreement mm -hmm. was that we would share equipment, and they would have access to the studio once a week mm -hmm. uh, at a reasonable time uh, to record. Mm -hmm. And then you yeah. just couldn't agree. We would, on what well, the time at, would be, yeah, they wanted extra stuff. Yeah, at the time we okay. we did agree to it too. Okay. Um, going forward after that though, uh, it, we didn't know how long this was going to last, so we just put a November date in there, just yeah. to have a a set date six months later. Like let's we'll, we'll revisit this in six months. Yeah, sure. Yeah, and uh, she they could have came and got it then. Um, but uh, that's that's what I was going for. But then to start right before Pork Fest, we started doing negotiations for buying them out. Uh, eventually, we did in August. Uh, so we bought the remaining equipment. We started negotiations on we went you know what prices and on what. Right, so right. I didn't even want all the equipment anyways. Like half the equipment they brought in, like didn't even use. I didn't need it because we already had some of our equipment. Um, but uh, and then from there, uh, I mean that ended, and we didn't even speak for two over two months and then finally we started speaking but I, the people that do that podcast aren't even here anymore so i'm not really too worried about it so so no there's no longer anyone who was involved in this agreement yeah even but they still have yeah but here's the thing they still have yeah. huge disciples they have disciples here okay and I, and I still have hatred from those disciples even now and did this have anything to do with your previous co-host leaving no that was a whole nother story. Yeah, that's a whole nother okay, story. And we can come, we'll get that in the next segment. We'll oh come boy. Back. <laughs> this is turning out to be very exciting. See, we miss all this gossip because we're not from Manchester. Oh, so we just like completely outside. Uh -huh. So much Manch drama. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of Manch drama. We could just do a whole drama show, really. That'd yeah. be good listening. Yeah, yeah I right. can dig that. The insider. I mean, people <laughs> like to hear about drama. I, <laughs> they, they really do. It, it was a lot mm. of drama with that. Like the drama that came up with that was. It doesn't sound like it has to be that complicated. I don't know. Like uh, you know who you know who we're talking about. I mean, you guessed it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I just guessed it based on the context. I mean. I, mean, first I don't off, know. I'm not taking sides for this. First <laughs> off, for, first off, knowing, guessing who it was, mm -hmm. do you think it was wrong for having that in place before we even did anything, knowing who we're talking about? I don't know. Rebel Love Studios isn't in capital letters. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a problem yes, right totally. there. Yeah, but no. <laughs> The Federal Reserve is going to be printing some uh, bonded debt based on that contract. Maybe. But... Uh, yeah, that was a, a lot of sure? drama. Are you sure you didn't turn my volume down? Because I feel like, which channel am I on anyway? <laughs> which channel? Are you on? Oh man, you are number four. Okay, I feel like you're louder than me, Rob. But maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. It might just be your headphones. I don't know. Um, <laughs> my headphones are sexist. Then they are right. accentuating I, male voices and uh, drowning out the female voice. I bumped you up a little bit. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Sure. I tried to duct tape it. Hey, so Rob, you got a question from the chat room. Uh, they want to know if you cover up your tattoo at work. No, I actually find that this sell this helps me sell a lot more. My tattoos. What do you do for work? Uh, I am a sales rep for a. Uh, see, I don't really want to say it on air. Okay, can you um, say the industry? Cell phone industry. Okay. Yeah, that, yeah I guess don't I'm say that on air. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I actually had to sign like a whole thing where like. 
you know, I'm not going to. Uh, oh yeah, my God, I, it's me. <laughs> 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 that is over myself. I think we've all had enough of that jingle. <laughs> are you gonna Are you gonna sing the jingle? No, that's Hannah Hoffman. Everybody oh, always conflates our voices, but I don't sing. Would you she sing do the pork therapy jingle on here? Well, she sang it. I never she sang, sang it too, but you know yeah. it. I do know it, but I'm not willing to sing it right now. <laughs> okay. You know, I, I almost kind of forget it. It's we got, so we did, you did you get think? Mark Warden to sing the Porcupine Real Estate on the podcast wow. that he was on. And it was actually before the, the show started, I already started recording. And that was like the bumper leading into that episode. It was <laughs> him hilarious. singing. Yeah. It was like LRN goal just to have that, <laughs> to have him do that. So now I know why Shire Dude is so quiet during the show. It's because he's looking at his phone the whole time. Well, no, he's uh, <laughs> I'm in the chat he's room. In the chat room. So a lot I'm of times we get questions. questions on the chat. And yes, Rebel Love Show is on iTunes and Stitcher. See, <laughs> <laughs> who asked that? Man, that's so square. What? Oh, is Howie not watching? If if he's watching, he can hear us. If he's watching, yeah. If he's just listening, he can't hear us. Yeah. Yeah. This is why you need to be at shiredude.com watching the cam. Yeah, I don't really care. Well, I love my job. I actually really do. I'm reading. But uh, I don't talk about uh, about it on the show. Even though I don't, I don't like that. I understand the philosophical differences by working for said company. But at the same time, that said company pays for my life here doing all this. So it funds this. If that makes any sense. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And any, any like ISP or telecom, I wouldn't talk about them for like two seconds if I work for them just because I don't, it's just too hot. You know what I mean? Too hot a topic. Yeah. Welcome back to the Rebel Love Show. And uh, Stephanie, I have a question for you. More of a request, but also a question from both me and Shire Dude. Okay. When are you bring pork therapy back? <laughs> well, um, I've wanted to bring it back for a while. The truth, the real truth is, I'm kind of anxious about like, you know, it's just been so long since I've published anything on the site that now it's like a big deal. So whatever I publish next is going to be like, oh my God, it's she's broken the year and a half of silence. And maybe I'm just making it too big in my mind, but that's kind of how I feel. I feel like I've gone so long that it's now like a huge deal. And really the truth is like I've recently changed careers within the last two years and I went through a lot of life changes around the same time that I stopped doing the live show, Fork Therapy. And I love doing it. It was just like, Every Friday night I was doing the show and it was like taking up too much time and I just didn't have the bandwidth for it. So I had to stop for a while and I don't, I'm not really happy with the way I handled it. I kind of just stopped. I didn't like explain, Hey, I'm, you know, I'm taking a break. I'm sure everybody would have understood, but I just didn't do that. And now I feel kind of embarrassed. It's like, you know, when some, you know, when someone sends you an email and you take like a week to write back and you're like, Oh shit, I t it's been a week. Now, like, I have to make it really good. I have to write a really long response. And, and then you, like, procrastinate even more. So it was one of those things. And I'm working on that. I'm, I've been getting a lot better with those types of situations. But um, I feel like I have to say something, like, really good. I have to have, like, a really good, you know, authentic explanation for why I stopped and why I'm bringing it back. So I'm just not quite ready to do that yet. But I do want to bring it back. And I want to do, like, a strict advice show like that would be really that's the original reason i started pork therapy was like you know relationship love sex questions from a sort of liberty loving perspective and that was super fun for me and so that's what i want to do again but i have not quite there yet <laughs> i'm a huge podcast listener podcast junkie and i i'm subscribed to multiple your guys podcasts one night and that one i have that subscribed on stitcher i have not listened to that last episode not yet. It's it's been on there for like a year, and I haven't like I I know that's the last one, so I haven't listened to it yet. I think it's, it's still really, alive then. Yeah, it's still up there. I'm assuming <laughs> it's on my Stitcher where like it shows highlight whether or not you listen to it or not. It's still I haven't listened to that last one yet. I've been saving it. It's still oh, there. Oh, thank you. I think the last one I posted was actually really anticlimactic. I don't think it was even my own show. I think it was like I was on Brian's show and I posted. The, oh, yeah, it was, it was, it was YouTube together. Tech. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, th I mean, I see maybe an opening like this summer to bring it back, but 
I'm not going to commit to that because I'm just not sure when exactly I'll be ready. But when it comes back, it'll be relationship questions, getting back to the roots, and it'll be something that's fun for me because that's the only reason I'm going to do it. <laughs> not to make money, not to change the world, just to do a fun show for me. I'll tell you who's ready for pork therapy to come back is a chat room. There's pretty much everyone in here. The Aww, second I said thanks, you guys were coming room. on, they're like, ask about pork therapy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, guys. And I'm still reading questions, by the way, if you guys want to submit any questions to Stephanie or Brian. Now, um, Brian, I wanted to talk about your game. Yeah. Okay. So actually, when, when we said we'd be on this show, I actually planned on it being out the game's name is Hypercronius, and like any great software, it's been delayed, uh, at least by a couple weeks. You know, it'll have been delayed when it finally comes out. So I don't want to lay down like another hard date because I did have a hard date of April 5th, um, but uh, it, it's, it'll definitely be out, you know, this month. That, that's the, that's the I bottom mean, line. I mean, you have a pretty that. good excuse. You can blame it on like the rising of Jesus that you didn't get the game out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you mean uh, Ishtar? But right. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. So, but but the game is uh, Hypercronius. That's the name of it. Now, I've been, I've still been kind of pretty secretive as to what the story is about, um, but it is definitely an anarchist flavored, uh, like heavily anarchist flavored uh, game, which I don't think there's not, there's, it's just, it doesn't exist. There's no games out there that are like really anarchist uh, that are, I don't want to say peaceful is not the right word, but. Um, that, that don't follow the similar like kind of status tropes of how to solve problems and things like that. It just, it didn't exist. And so I was like, hell, I'll, you know, make my own game company. And I mean, I'm a one man show on it. Uh, and yeah, do, do something that, that hasn't been done before. So, but it's a, it's an RPG role-playing game. If you like Final Fantasy, you know, it's, it's that kind of thing, but it's a lot easier, very stripped down as far as RPG, because it's more important to get the story out there. Uh, cause again, you know, I mean, this is an area that like, like, I mean, you know, there's, there's great podcasts out there and all that stuff, you know, that's all very real, very authentic. Um, but, uh, you know, there's not a lot of like really great, like voluntarist or anarchist fiction. In, I, I agree. Yeah, yeah. In any form, you know, uh, I mean, like even the, the first book that most people think of, you know, uh, would be Ayn Rand's Atlas Shrugged, right? When there's even better books That's than that. That's not exactly anarchist. No, it's not. It's <laughs> not. No. Close. How long ago did that come out? Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Fifty years ago. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and I'd even argue it's that time it, for a new one. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there, there's, there's better, there's stuff out there. There's better stuff, but I mean, there's just not enough. Uh, so I think the, the area of fiction is something that really needs to get penetrated, for lack of a better word. Oh and uh, I'm just the person to do the penetrating. <laughs> That's a great sales pitch. Yeah. If I ever heard one. <laughs> I would definitely like to see more volunteers and anarchists fiction period. Yeah. Uh, more content besides just, I'm so tired of listening to any kind of podcast where, uh, or anything where it's like talking about the ideas of Liberty. I, I know what that means. I know what it means to be a free person. Like I don't need to listen to that all the time. Like free talk live plays a huge role for waking people up across the, sure. you know, everywhere, not just the United States, but the planet. Um, but uh, I, I already know that. Yeah. Know? Yeah. And like, Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, I mean, like with podcasting, you know, this is something I thought about a lot is that there really, I think there needs to be, you know, with that anarchist or voluntarist, uh, you know, foundation for, from the host, there needs to be like really specific. I'd love it if there were more specific uh, shows like that, that were topic specific. Like I run a tech show, Sovereign Tech. Yeah. And as far as I know, it's the only like anarch explicitly anarchist run uh, tech show out there. I'd love for there to be a medical show, you know, for there to be uh, an art show would be amazing, you know. So, I mean, I think there's still room, there's still there, things to do. There in is an art show called, about that. It's okay. called Shire Dude. Shire Dude. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's he looks like a work of art. There's no doubt. But. <laughs> it's, yeah, as loosely. I, I like to call it art and comedy. So, you know, I well, guess it fits in both those categories. Well, I would definitely say what you do is adding culture. I, I think this show adds culture. To yeah, sure, it's sure. Not, it's like cultural oriented show. Like half the time, we never even talk about you know, most things that libertarians and anarchists even talk about. Most yeah, of the yeah. time we're talking about like what our lives are like, how, how are we living here and, you know, what we would normally talk about with each other, not with what we would talk about to like trying to wake somebody up. Yeah, yeah. You what know? is your goal actually with this show? My goal, I actually have a whole huge um, artistic view on this show. Um, it has multiple points. One, I kind of want to... Uh, 
what's what I'm looking for. I want to showcase what the, uh, the personalities in the community in uh, the Shire are. But on top of that, I actually have uh, kind of like seasons. And this show is going through seasons. I would actually say we're on season three at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, man, that's when shows get good. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> we're really, what we're doing is like, it's weird for us, that for you guys to be here right now, for a simple fact that we rarely ever have new guests anymore. So we have like a pool of recurring guests and we kind of can build, we build up on the storyline. What happened last time you were here? What, what did we talk about? And we already have a good uh, rapport with those people. We kind of build up a character um, with that person. So like, I remember like when I'm listening to podcasts all the time, I'm running. Uh, Cause I used to always listen to podcasts when I was running and you kind of build up a, uh, a relationship with the people in that podcast and whatnot, especially yeah, a weird, creepy, one-sided relationship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very and uh, one thing you kind of do with that though, is like you, you follow what's going on, especially hangout style sh- uh, shows. And that's what kind of this is. I'm trying to build up like a, uh, you know, where people listen specifically for a recurring guest. You know, like there's three recurring guessing right behind you. I know like some shows do better than others, depending on which one of those are on the show, which I don't want to say who. Yeah, um, they're all making me very uncomfortable. <laughs> I just want to say. <laughs> um, but uh, no, I want to build up like a uh, kind of like an artistic way of like having a season, like but in real life, like real people, but building up like a whole season of uh, stories and content talking about what's going on in their lives. Sure. So when do we get dragons like in Game of Thrones? Ooh. No, don't worry. I hate Game of Thrones. <laughs> Maybe when the singularity happens. I hate that word too. (laughs) Well, we'll talk about that when we get back then. Shire Eve. Yeah, all the music is from uh, Free Music Archive. So it's oh, all, yeah, I love Free Music Archive. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, right on. I used to use that. Yeah. that They're cool bumpers, though. You like, know, I, that one that was just playing, I really like that one. Mm-hmm. Some of the others I don't like. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but I'm very particular. But I really like that one. through a sea of terrible music on I'm there. sure. Yeah, I know. That's <laughs> oh, what it, copyright free music. I oh. use stock music all the time, yeah. like in my work. And, you know, I know exactly what you mean, where you have to wade through... It's like shopping at TJ Maxx. I just played like, in the background. Just through a bunch of junk yeah. to find the diamonds. <laughs> just whatever I'm doing, I just played in the background. And then my ears will perk up. I'll hear something good. Yeah. That's how I found the theme song for uh, Shire Dude, the TV sh- or the show. Oh, wow. Is, um, yeah, we, had, we, we were doing a podcast called Sex and Science Hour. Rob, did you ever listen to that one? I actually have not listened to that. You probably would the, like it. The reason like being, us and- I, I know that sounds crazy, but... Since I moved here, I almost don't listen to anything anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's like, a I can understand that. <laughs> and I used to listen to everything all the time. Now I haven't. I don't even know if you're steaming on Let's Talk Bitcoin anymore. Yeah, I'm still on Let's Talk Bitcoin. Okay. Yeah. All right. But I mean, that's like I can handle that because all I do is show up and talk. Like the other hosts do all the production. At actually, one of the other but the, hosts. The sex and science that that goes on. That it network? was it was on the Let's Talk Bitcoin network, but the thing is, like, it never fit in. It was like that was the show that I wanted to do, like pork, ther- like the next incarnation of pork therapy, yeah. and it's it was kind of a crazy circumstance how it came to be on the Let's Talk Bitcoin network. Um, but then we stopped doing that too after like twenty episodes because it. But it was really big, like it was getting like, you know, six to ten thousand plays per yeah. show. No, no, That's so, impressive. But anyway, we found the music bumpers on, I think it was also on Free Music Archive. So <laughs> okay. we used like video game music. It was pretty cool. Yeah. It was like chip tunes. We yeah, actually, we used the Russian march for the intro, which I thought was perfect. It was like an 8-bit <laughs> rendition of the, the Soviet march. <laughs> weird. That's what it sounded <laughs> yes, like. It was weird, but it worked. No, you're good. Yeah. But yeah, I haven't listened to that one yet. I, I, is it still up on the archives it, or anything? It's like on that? SoundCloud, yeah, it's for on sure. SoundCloud? Yeah, okay. you might you might enjoy it. I mean, that's another one we plan to bring back, but I just need to make more space for podcasting. I've been focusing so much on my voiceover stuff. Like for me, like this takes way too much time out of my day, out of my life. It takes mm-hmm. a like doing lot this. of time, and it doesn't it's, pay well. You know, that's the thing. It's just hard no, to make money. Hey, <laughs> like, we, <laughs> like we might get enough. Do- Why do you think we like sometimes like we'll get enough donations? Like you know, sometimes get a pint from time to time at Murphy's. <laughs> <Right. laughs> you know, I mean, like yeah. uh, this is all a labor of love. It's not a. Uh, no one should ever start a podcast. Like I want to make you know. 
hundred K a year doing this like this. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Don't do podcasting. Yeah. For money. Don't, no, don't ever do no, it for no, money. No. Like people have said like, you guys should sell stuff like t-shirts or mugs or something. No, and, no. Then you have you to know, mess with inventory. Then I, you don't and want then to. I have to be a salesperson every single episode. I'm a salesperson in real life. I don't yeah. want to, well, not real life. I'm in, in the matrix, you know, out there, <laughs> I go, I, I jack in, I'm a salesperson, but, but outside you, of that, I'm not. But do you do it for the groupies? You know what Creamy D says about groupies, right? No, what does he, he say? He says every, every famous person that he's ever known in the liberty movement or otherwise, he doesn't know anyone who hasn't taken advantage of the groupie situation. I'm not in it for the groupies. I'm just enjoying my life. <laughs> Do you <laughs> have any groupies? This. Do I have some groupies? Um, yeah, I mean, right besides like your girlfriend who lives with you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get tit pics? Do I get tit pics? Yeah. I have actually. Yeah, me too. Okay, yeah. good. Jesus. Yeah, I Why have doesn't before. anyone send me tit pics? Just, uh, I said, well, hey, if you guys are listening at home and you're a female, friend Stephanie on Facebook or something <laughs> like that and send her a bunch of tit pics because yeah. that's what she wants. Yeah, she really well, wants that. Okay, me. now I have to backpedal. There's probably people said in the LR chat like, oh my God, I got to go on Facebook. Yeah. And no, okay, I want the tits to belong to the person... Well, that's well, already ruined. So. Welcome back to the Rebel Love Show. And uh, we're talking about tits and Facebook, apparently. <laughs> I was set up for this. I, fr I was framed. You were framed? <laughs> no, we were just talking about groupies and people sending pictures of themselves to famous, internet famous podcasters internet. and things like that. And I was saying, if I get, if I get pics, I want them to be... I want to have a rapport with the person. I want to like them. And I want them to be sending pics of themselves, not of somebody else. And I want them to be classy. So I guess I have some some standards that might be hard to meet. Taste when, when is it? I don't when, want just any pics. If yeah. you're, well, you just want, okay, so you want people to send you just selfies of themselves, sometimes tits out, sometimes not? Or what, what no, are you saying? Basically, I want pretty girls who I already know and like to send me tasteful nude pics of themselves. Wait, okay. define, and I also want a tasteful? unicorn yeah, what's tasteful? Yeah. and a bunny rabbit and a birthday hat. Yeah. Wait a minute. I'm your boyfriend. What is tasteful? <laughs> yeah. I don't know what tasteful is. <laughs> I should know these things. Hmm. I mean, it, tasteful, like there's some kind of story behind it. Like it's not just out of the blue, like bad lighting, um, you know, not very nice tits. I don't, I mean, all tits are nice, <laughs> but... <laughs> What does this but, all mean? Yeah, I, 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 I could spend the less, like the rest of the segment. Yeah, we just talked about the entire show now about yeah. what your what your uh, interest is and in which tits are better than others. <laughs> you like them large, small? Well, like some art, artistic, um, you know, art, some artfulness to the picture would be nice. So, some like, composition. Okay, you know, but, but, it doesn't even have to be nude. It could be like, um, you know, scantily clothed in like lace or something that's sexy i think it can be sexier than just regular tits out bad lighting kind yeah. of thing some tasteful side boob. yeah you know what though all right this is yeah. something Th this shire dude gets it yeah but you know what? i think the i think the whole thing's a sham okay I, or i think What's it, a sham? It, the, the fact that that people can just send you tip pics like they can just oh lift up their shirt to you know with their their cell phone take the shot and and then email it to you instantaneously or use telegram or whatever they want to do if they want to encrypt it okay People used to, and I used to get this stuff, you know, years ago, people used to send Polaroids. Now that takes some work. You know what I mean? I mean, you got to put some effort into, into really sending. I mean, and then, then you wouldn't, I don't think you'd be so concerned with like, oh, is there a story behind it? Or is this it's like, no, this person took a camera and maybe they even went and like, maybe they wore their dark sunglasses and had a hat on, you know, to, to hide the fact that, you know, they're getting it developed somewhere. Maybe it wasn't even a Polaroid and they got a nice eight by 10 glossy. You know what I mean? And, and I, I think that there's just... You know, it's not, it doesn't mean anything today. If somebody sent, I mean, please send me to, or well, don't send Stephanie some tip picks. Everything okay. old is good. Everything new is shit. Right, Brian? Yeah, well, mm, sure. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean, it used to really take some effort to do things. It's like people, people message you or email you, you know, people used to send like, a, like people fan letters. I mean, that's a really heartfelt action, you yeah. know, just to write out a full on It, it raises letter. the bar. Yeah, no, it really does. It really does. And, and, and now it's just, yeah, it's gone. So, so you guys have received pics of tits, right? I have but before. have you ever received a dick pic from a guy? No, I have not. Like an unwanted one? No. No, I haven't. See, I'm on the, I I'm on the bad one, side of both no. of these situations. I would imagine I've received so. unwanted dick pics. I've never received a tit pic. 
Yeah, that's not going to have pretty much for uh, for men in general. You're not going <laughs> to get that many, you know, picks like that compared to women. It's just like it's that it, yeah. that is how it is. You know, we're not going to get we get it, but not that not to the extreme that you may be used to. That's like with uh, like people are talking about like on their Tinder or whatnot, with like and saying like or other people when you know females swiping right every time they do they match. Like I get maybe ten percent wow. matches swiping if right. that. Yeah, so it's like this is the way it is. Like men are going to be, or women in general, just if you're female, that it's like a huge multiplier effect for it. All right, all right. Now, now, but, but wait a minute, women looking for women? Sure. I don't get very many swipes. All right, I have so to so, be honest, oh. is this that whole Tinder thing? Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, just can we stop for a second and consider the fact that Tinder is really belittling every human being on planet earth to a swipe sure no no i agree with you to a point but at the same time there's an art form in how you have your tinder though like um you only have literally a couple seconds you have a couple seconds to sell yourself like with a good profile picture and then if that really is good enough you, you you go into it you have a very short biograph of like what who you are so you got to sell yourself it's like an elevator pitch on like a, a dating site it's like like that, you gotta sell yourself immediately. Uh, how can you know the person with you an can. elevator pitch? I mean, and if it's well, that, if this does anyone read the crafted, profiles though, or do they just look at the? Play? I, I mean, no, it depends. If it's, it's like Playboy, you know, oh yeah, the articles are great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, no, I mean, like for me, like I live a interesting lifestyle to say the least. You know, I don't uh, like I'm I'm actually fully honest on my Tinder too. Like when I met Anne, I already had two partners at the time. I told completely I had that in my profile. Oh, right I told her and stuff like that. Like that's that was the thing. You know, I, I'm fully honest on there. Um like with other profiles, I will click on them if they uh I kind of look for a certain aspect. Uh because I know I'm not gonna get the normal conservative person isn't going to be uh very into that so i'm trying to find like that match of where like i i'll, I'll swipe left a lot just so for some of the fact like i'm looking for that person where I, I think that they'll be somewhat socially acceptable of me the way i live my life so they shouldn't have like an american flag in the back oh my god they have any kind of <laughs> instant uniform swipe left. instant swipe yeah, left. Yeah. i don't care how hot <laughs> they are that no that's a swipe left immediately because it's not mm. going to happen anyways i don't take that stuff seriously at all like to me it's really just something that i do when I'm waiting for something. Oh, me too. Like, you know, like, no, no, well, that's get, so don't nice. Get me wrong. I do that while I'm driving. Usually, I'm like, oh, let's do that. But, yeah, but or if you've I'm actually time met people on it. Yeah, I've had multiple dates off of Tinder. Yeah, well, I've, then, had, I've I've had two different partners I've met off of Tinder. I had one girl like talk to me once, and then she blocked me within like a few minutes after. That. Well, maybe. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> I didn't say anything. I mean, <laughs> well, maybe it's because you you just treated everyone else like a swipe. It's like, well, maybe this person doesn't have much consideration for the human race. I mean, or maybe she wasn't really a girl. I don't know. I mean, well, that's possible. I think that's more likely. Possibly. You're well, see, right, no, Brian. No. It's, it's not very, it's not very deep, very meaningful. I, I think that's why, like, it's almost like a drug, you know, it's like, it doesn't give you any real like satisfaction or connection at all. It's just like looking at pictures of strangers and, Oh, this is fun to do. I'll do this mindlessly. I'll just swipe, swipe. It's like it's it's like a mindless habit. And See, you're right. It's probably not very good. Yeah, like use Instagram or something, because at least there you follow the person, and then that shows that oh yeah, I get, you know, I have a relationship. I mean, I get it. Like Instagram. Well, go ahead. Well, what you do is in, on Tinder, you put your Instagram and Snapchat handle in there in the bio, so that they can add you on there if they look at your profile. Yeah, all seems awfully specious to me. I don't know. I don't get any of this online dating thing. Like I, I just, none of it really well, makes a whole lot of sense. Well, one thing I love about it is you're actually going after people who are in the market to date someone else. So like a lot of times if you go to like a bar or a party setting, you don't really know if that person is looking or not, you know, can I flirt with that person? I don't know. Uh, at least this way, the people who are interested in wanting to go out on a date with someone or on right here at this, and I don't have to go, it's not like, you know, 10 years ago where I have to go to my desktop computer and like go, you know, it's all, you know, very uh, taboo online dating, you know, a decade ago. Now it's like, I literally use my phone, not. like from the palm of my hand and I can literally use my consciousness to connect with someone who may be interested in me. Yeah. See now the one I like, what is it? Wingman? Is this the one? Yeah. Wingman. What this does is that when you're on an airplane, you're getting on an airplane that like people will set availability on the airplane. Oh, and wow. then, yeah, then you can join, you know, the mile high club and, and you know, <laughs> you're in the same area and you can kind of look around and see if there's anybody. I, I mean, it just seems like a much better, like, that's the thing. It, it, it seems so detached from the person as to where wingman, you're completely attached to the person and your, you know, your lives are riding together. And I think there's a lot more excitement 
you know, because there's a chance that that plane's going to crash at any given time. So it just heightens the whole feeling, you know what I mean? Uh, so I, I, I can get behind Wingman, but this tender thing, I still feel like it very much diminishes me as a person. Well, maybe, not that I'm on there. Well, then you should jump on OKC then. It's no, a little bit more intense. <laughs> but I really don't blame you. Have you Brian. seen my girlfriend? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I understand. Yeah, I'm going on okay, Cupid. <laughs> I'm definitely not going on there looking for guys. <laughs> I can tell you that much. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I do I, I mean I do okay see it works sometimes, but uh Tinder is usually where it's at for me usually. So Rob, real quick, uh, yeah. what what is um what is your experience? Because you say you're polyamorous, right? Like yeah, right out, absolutely. Right yeah. out I, it's on my profile. I actually say who my partner is at the time. Uh, and Anne's my life partner at this point. Like, I love that woman. She's always going to be with Aww. me. Right on, man. Yeah. Um, but that's full disclosure. If they can't accept that, then don't even message me. I actually even say that. that um, I suppose in that way, it's like good for exposing like that lifestyle, right? Well, in, 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 exactly. It exposes it on the same time, though. One thing I love about it, I don't have to explain that. Like if I if they actually start messaging me, that's already there. I already put it out. Yes, I you know I I'm with someone else, but it's an open poly relationship. I can do this if I want. Um, and like in my profiles, I actually have a picture of me and her together. Like, like I'm here's my partner. Like this is what we look like together. Well, you know that that's great. I mean, because it's <laughs> like. You know, one thing that annoys me is when people have pictures of their kids oh, in God. with them. I don't want to date your kids. No, don't I know, right? On there. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? I mean, what kind of relationship are you setting up there? <sighs> yeah. Listen, kids, don't put your kids on their dating site. Don't do it. <laughs> kids, don't, don't let kids. your parents put you <laughs> on their dating sites. We'll be back with more online dating. Long break. Sweet. When do you guys run till? Till midnight. It's midnight. Two hour oh, show. Right well, it's flying through right now. Yeah. Oh, we're halfway through. Halfway yeah, yeah. through wow. already. Yeah. Right on. Where'd you get that water, Casimir? Uh, yeah. I looked at you, but Charity came the water. The water. So, so no by the way, I'm a huge sci-fi geek. Oh, right on, man. Yeah. Um. B5 was really where it was at. Thank you. I oh, love B5. Man. I love you. B5 was so ahead of its time. Yes. They had such a horrible budget, and the, the, the technology wasn't there to do what they want. I heard there's going to be a uh, – are they doing like a remake, bringing it back or whatnot? No. So it's funny, right, because they're – somebody's building like Star Fury – models uh -huh. cgi models again okay. i'm just going to listen oh, to the okay. other end feed you don't have to put on yeah yeah uh and so apparently there's going to be some kind of a movie jms j michael straczynski who mm -hmm. pretty much has actually made every movie that everybody loves in the past few years because he's been making all the comic book movies he made babylon 5 and uh he said that if he was going to run some kind of crowdfunding thing and if that didn't work that he'll just run it on his own the thing is is that he has to keep it to some degree detached from what he did before because Warner Brothers won't hand over the rights. They won't even admit that it exists. Why? So that's why nothing's been done with it. I, no one knows. He doesn't know. In fact, th there was kind of a joke because uh, today, actually, there was a shampoo bottle, apparently, that actually uses that number five from the uh -huh. Babylon 5 logo. And it has, like, the name of the shampoo running across the middle of it. And everybody's like, hey, is Warner Brothers going to sue them? And JMS said, well, you're going to have to – They're gonna, Warner Brothers would have to admit that Babylon 5 exists for them to even do that in the first place. Yeah. So, but, yeah, you're right. It's, it was, in my opinion, it's the greatest show of all time. You yeah. Know, I mean, hands down. Uh, there's, there's nothing that, that really touches it. New Battlestar Galactica, you take your pick of the show, none of them, none of them really do it. Yeah, the – the, all the satire in it, the acting, like everything that happened that show, yeah, yeah. I, I, all of it, like it was beautiful. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it, it, it at the same time, like it blew DS9 out of the water. Like, oh yeah, yeah, like yeah. DS9 was on at the same time. I love that show, but like B5 just blew that out. Of the yeah, water. you know, I love DS9 too, but DS9 really started copying Babylon Five. Oh yeah, uh, there, it, that was a big competition. In fact, I remember there were Star Trek books that were written about like making books, you know, and oh. they were saying in it that. Uh, you know, well, Babylon 5 is going to fail. D Space 9 is going to be the stuff um, because, you know, DS9 is episodic and it's not this, you know, episode after episode affects each other, which mm -hmm. is how Babylon 5 works. Yeah. But then comes season five of DS9. That's what they were doing. They oh, were yeah. Huge story arcs. And it's like, oh, you guys are all copying. And then even the way DS9 ended was all kind of 
uh, almost spiritual, kind of yeah. like, I mean, not the Babylon 5 got spiritual. They explained everything with science. But uh, yeah, so they, they just, they totally copied it because they knew it was working. They knew it was a great idea. Way ahead of its time. You're absolutely right. Yeah. You're a beautiful man. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, but no, I love that show. I, I, uh, a lot, seen all the movies, the TV movies for yeah. it too. And some of those were even better than the show itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, a lot like, of them were good. Like especially the the um the prequel one that's uh in the beginning. And yeah, with uh Sheridan like, you know, destroying the one of the white stars or whatnot. Oh, the black, black yeah, the black star yeah, yeah, worship. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was awesome. <sighs> Yeah, and lots they, of good stuff. I would love to see that show be remade, or even if it was like a movie, just like have a whole new remake. Like if they're gonna bring something back, bring back uh, B five. Yeah, I agree. There, there, there's gonna be a movie, as far as I know, it's gonna happen. You know, so we can just wait. But most of the actors are dead, so. Yeah, I know. That's why I'm saying a remake. They can't really. Yeah. Like, pick up yeah, where they I don't left know off. If you can do that twice, though. I mean, that's. I'd rather just see it to be a movie series, like a trilogy or something like that. Yeah, yeah, maybe I could see that. But that's such a big story. Uh, I agree. There's a way you could do it right. Because like the fourth season, you remember they, they did like multiple, they did the, the Shadow War, then they did yeah. the Earth Civil War. Yeah. And that was, the Earth Civil War was supposed to be in season five, but JMS didn't know if he was going to get a fifth season. And so, uh, you know, they, he had to crunch it all into the fourth season. So, I mean, there's a way you could do it better to where you could spread it out better, but... Yeah, I just I'm I'm not one for remakes. I hear you. Yo. Yes, sir. Are you also a man of philosophy? I've been told. You've been told. Interesting. Do you ever read any philosophy, or do you ever influenced by any major thinkers? Um, I love like influence would be Max Stern. Carla Gorecki just started following me on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Stern, I think, actually, That's Stern funny. was like the first guy to admit anarchist. You know, he was what they call an egoist anarchist, but he was like the first guy to admit, hey, we don't have words for to describe a lot of what we are. And like he had no hard dogma on property. There's there's a lot of nuances that no one else really mm-hmm. repeats with Sterner. That's a uh, good he's, suggestion. He's yeah, he's I mean, if you still I have the influence on the kind thing, of strands or domains, domains. Oh, I know. Yep. Yep. yeah, everybody, inspired? even communists, yeah. like to attach to wow. him. Yeah, right. he wouldn't that's be that's that's me. all right, right, right. That, no, it's all up in limbo um, because of Joel because um, he didn't transfer. Did mm. tra- well, mine's just my fault too for not following up on it. I don't say this the site anymore, so. 66 still wants to know about the hotel drama. The hotel drama? Hotel drama with old girl. Oh, God. He's asked about this every episode consistently. Yeah. Uh, what happened to ISFLC yeah, yeah, yeah. with old girl? I'm sorry, the artist formerly known as old girl. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you've been reading them? Or? No, I've read... Well, if you really want to know, you should listen to Seditious Sirens because that was talked about on that. Uh, what episode was that? Episode five, wasn't episode it six? the episode yeah, called "Anal Your Way to Success"? Yeah, anal, "Anal Your Way to Success" was the name of that episode. Yeah, yeah. Is there? Do they have a podcast feed or a website? Do you guys? Have mm, they're on the. They're on YouTube and Facebook. Um, yeah, every Friday night, they're we had our main voyage. I was on. I was a guest on there, but they're now at ten o'clock every Friday night. Sedition so Sirens. Right on. That's yeah. cool. That's the spot pork therapy used to be in. <laughs> cool. This isn't our problem. You know, I mean, yeah. when, when have you ever heard a government say it's not a delicious course? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Um, I do like yeah. Epicurus, um, I think is way ahead of his way ahead of his time. Um, in fact, he keeps, I think, getting proven I right. Just, like, so, are you a fan of Stoics then? Is that oh. Oh. No, no, well, Epicurus is kind of your antithesis of the Stoics. Oh, I see. Uh, well, that's true. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, that's all right. That's right. Epicurus and Epicureanism is right. Yeah, indulgent to the war. Yeah. It's easy to confuse Epicurus with wow. Epictetus, who That's is true. a Stoic. I have the discourse of Epictetus at home. So yeah, okay, that yeah. Was, that was the, exactly right. Yeah, like I, I like... Wow. Um, Thanks, newbie. I appreciate that comment. There's some interesting stuff going on in the chat room. They're talking about all the different shows and like... How LRN isn't what it used to be, blah, blah. <laughs> What? Well, it goes through seasons. That's what they're just saying. Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's hard doing this for... I can see why podcasts come and go. It's a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it is a lot of work. Like, I'm shocked the amount of shows that are on LRN live yeah. all the time. You yeah, know? You, but don't you feel good when some of them kind of 
well, I don't know if I should say that. When some that of them go by the wayside? Yeah, when they kind of like, I don't know, there's a whole last man standing kind of feeling that you get, that you know. But that's just me. I oh, send hate the mail last to man Brian at Zomi is off Brett. Game. <laughs> because he's been going, he's been going forever. 2009 or whatever. Yeah, it shows me. show uh we are broadcasting on manchester new hampshire our guests today are uh ryan sovereign and stephanie murphy how's it going guys oh this is great Great. i'm really sorry i keep like talking into the beds making the show very unprofessional oh it's okay that's what we do here we're unprofessional as it is we're probably (laughs) the least professional show on lrn by by far well maybe what about puke in the gang you know well i i say live (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I say <laughs> I say live show um podcast feed, yeah, probably uh probably uh Puke and a Gang is a little bit more or less professional than we are. Um but uh anyways, uh Pork Fest is coming up and uh you guys do uh free aid there. Yes. Um yeah, I mean that's way too professional to talk about right now. <laughs> Can we talk about the commercial? Sure. What do you want to talk about? Whatever whatever you guys want to talk about. What's up? Okay. This is my gossipy thing. So there's this one commercial on LRN that's talking about how great New Hampshire is or Keene or something. I'm not even sure. And it, it's like a bunch of testimonials from people saying why they like New Hampshire. Yeah. And like a lot of the people who are on that are no longer in New Hampshire. One of them is in this room. Yes. Yeah, and she's like, she's the last man standing. Fact, the, yeah, the, the, <laughs> the only original one because they edited that commercial to where Daryl's in it. But originally I remember wasn't that too. Yeah. Yeah. Listening to There's right been now. an update too. <laughs> yeah, so she is the last man standing that's in this room. Which well, she, is, she's she is in, the man. Cecilia is an <laughs> OG man. free stater. She's like, she's been here like at least a decade in Shire time, if not longer. Ten Shire years. Ten yeah. Shire so years I, I moved here in 2006. How, does that make me like the Grand Poobah or something? How many Shire years is that? Well, it it's depend- almost nine years. It depends on how hard you live here. So how hard, yeah. How hard, like for us, live hard for us, like a th- <laughs> <laughs> like Derek J is a ten, and just about everybody else <laughs> is like way lower. I don't know. <laughs> if you're here in 2006, the average Shire year is roughly uh, three months. So I've been here about six ish, almost yeah, five to six Shire years now. Uh, that would put you, God, you're you're getting up into. Uh, we, it depends. Cause I'm getting it, up into like back in my day yeah. territory. Yeah. yeah. 30 I mean, did, Shire years. What was it like when you were when when you were first here in the Shire so long ago? Oh my gosh. It was like there were so few of us that you would drive like two, three hours to go to a meetup and there'd be like a dozen people there. And it like everybody kind of knew everybody. Wait, what is this us? It sounds very collectivist. I'm not okay <laughs> with this. Free staters? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, but it was like that. Like it would, it wouldn't be uncommon or strange. Like I used to organize a meetup um, in the town where I was, and people would drive from like two, two and a half hours away to get there. And yeah. I mean, I I assume that had something. I'm not totally naive. I'm sure that had something to do with the fact that I was a woman too. <laughs> but you, you uh, do have more market capital <laughs> in in uh, the free state than the average man. Yeah. I guess, but I mean, there were there were male organized meetups too, for sure, and like people would just come from far away, and everybody kind of knew everybody, and like a lot of those people I haven't seen in ages, because then it, it became more fragmented, and it was like nobody wanted to drive two hours to go to a meetup anymore. Yeah, I, I'll be honest. Half the time, I don't really want to leave Manch that often. Cause <laughs> yeah, really, I mean, what, what a, a struggle like... it was for us to come here tonight. We drove <laughs> an hour and fifteen minutes. <laughs> Yeah, like, I mean, here there's always a meetup almost every day. There's something going on, like, all the time. I mean, like, Shire, we were talking about the the pub crawl that Shire created on Sunday, but that's just, even Sundays, there's usually, like, 20-some people at the at the meetup for uh, Bitcoin. You know, it's, right. it's a Bitcoin meetup, in all honesty, it's just a social Sunday, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but uh, even then, like, Tuesdays, there's always uh, a meetup. There's always something going on on a Friday. 
Um, there's actually multiple things going on on Fridays. Uh, there's always some uh, events going on where you get invited to go like a hiking trip or something like that. There's always something going on every week, uh, just driving distance from Manch that I don't, yeah. yeah I love it's it. awesome. There's actually a lot to do in New Hampshire. I really like it. And oh, I'm, yeah. so, I'm so glad, like I work for myself now, so, or well, I work for my clients, but I like to say I'm self-employed because I don't have a boss. You know, I have my own business, yeah. which is great. I love it. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a voice actor. You, you can get there too, Rob, if you really want to, you know, start up a side hustle and build it up to start an online business, you know, write an ebook or sell a course on an online course or something. You know, I saw this woman selling an online course about polyamory. Actually, Ann and I were on a podcast together. I know. I was did, listening to it. I was the one smoking yeah. the bong when you... When you <laughs> <laughs> You're the one who's like, is someone smoking a bong? Like, yeah, we and Dan were sharing it back and forth. I got good ears, man. <laughs> but yeah, this woman was selling an online course about how to be how to do polyamory. And I was like, man, if she can do an online course about how to do polyamory, the the market is just ripe with like if you establish yourself as an expert or you know, someone who's well known in a certain field, you can do things like sell online courses. You can even podcast about it and use it to promote your business. And you could make an income doing that. And, you know, eventually maybe you want to winter in Mexico or something where your money goes further. Like there's all kinds of tricks like that. So I've definitely gotten gotten into that realm, you mm -hmm. know, of like entrepreneurship and location independence and internet business and that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, I'm a voice actor. That's my that's my business. And the reason why I, I said that is because I have, um, you know, more flexibility and time. Like I could come down to Manchester on a Tuesday night to do the show with you guys, uh -huh. whereas I wouldn't have been able to do that before when I was working in my previous job. Um, but, you know, if you have a little bit of flexibility in your schedule, there's so many things to do in New Hampshire. Oh, like you do, especially if you're willing to drive a little bit, you know? Yeah. I mean, I haven't even really explored uh, New Hampshire as much as I want to. Like I've only been out yeah, to... There's uh, like a whole new world up in the north you know, in the Seiko River, you can go tubing, you can go to North Conway, the, the Kangamangas Highway. I haven't even <laughs> been stuff. to that yet. I have not, I wanted, I wanted to go, I wanted to go um, leaf peeping yeah. uh, in, in, in October. <laughs> it sounds and I, so dirty. Doesn't yeah, I know. I was going to say, what is this like going up to the Statue of David and just like lifting it up? Like, Whoa, look at that. That's well, exciting. I mean, in the autumn, it is beautiful in New Hampshire. Like yeah, it's, you can't oh, yeah. beat it. I mean, I came from a concrete jungle and I come here and it's like mountains left and right, rivers everywhere. And uh, plus the architecture is, you know, you know, well over a hundred years old where everything I'm used to is just like straight up concrete buildings left and right. Yeah. It was just made 50 years ago. So like coming here is just like a whole different look and feel from what I was always used to. Um, I love the way it looks here, but I haven't explored as much as I want. I haven't gone much up into the northern areas of New Hampshire. Every now and then I do. I used to work up there. I actually used to work up in Guilford for the oh, longest okay. time, but I lived here the whole time. I used wow. to commute an hour and 15 minutes yeah, one way yeah. for six months before I finally got a transfer. Wow. Yeah, it was it was rough, but I didn't want to live. I didn't want, I didn't want to live up in the lakes region. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that, that that's something because... Uh, one of the things, and I, I say this a lot, but it's it's so true. So many people complain about the cold. You know, they complain about the snow and all this stuff. And that just, that, well, I have a couple points of that, but the, but the main one is is that you, you've got these people who, especially, they'll call into shows, like you mentioned, Free Talk Live, or they call it, or write into other things. And they're just like, man, if they ever come for my guns, I'm, you know, I'm going to do something, you know, meaning the government, of course. Yeah, yeah. And... And it's like, but then you ask them, well, why don't you come to where there's a community of people that would support you, maybe not join you and, you know, go and at them with guns or anything, but it would at least be a support system of some kind. And they say, well, but it's cold. And it's like, man, you're ready to pick up guns. You're ready to take up arms against the government. And you're complaining about the fact that it's cold. It's like, where the hell are your priorities? Yeah. Plus, there's these modern day technologies called heaters and coats. Yeah. Like, you know. It's the thing. Like, if you live in a warm climate, half the year, it's going to be like unbearably hot. Well, if, like for me, anyway, I've, I've so told this story on here before, but when I moved here, it was right after an Arctic vortex, like that whole thing from a year ago where it was like, oh, negative, yeah. it was like negative 40 degree wind chills. I remember that because it, it screwed up a flight that I was supposed to take. Yeah, yeah. It, it was it was horrible. And uh, I, I literally left the, right after that. I landed here in Manchester and it was like 32 degrees. I'm like, this is like a tropical heat wave. What are people talking about? What is this <laughs> winter cold? You know, and surviving this past winter here, coming from Chicago, it's warmer here throughout the winter than it is in Chicago, though it doesn't last as long. Right. The cold lasts longer, but it's not as harsh. 
Like I'm used to like negative 20 degree wind chills like for like two or three weeks in January, even not with like withstanding like the whole Arctic, uh, Arctic vortex thing, but just like having cold weather, like very, very chilling, bone chilling uh, cold weather. That's not the case here at all. Yeah. Liberty keeps you warm. Anyway. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. <sighs> and uh, we'll be coming back with... Let me get back here. When we get back, I kind of want to... I want to touch base with uh, origin stories with you too. Yeah. Oh. Like how how did you guys somehow end up sitting across the table from us? She asked me out. <laughs> Dead serious. Oh, wow. <laughs> I didn't ask her. She asked me. <laughs> hmm. Okay. <laughs> well, anyway, we we could talk before then. <laughs> I'm not denying it. <laughs> Would you deny the truth? No. I like you. <laughs> Like me? I love you. Thank you. Very <laughs> <good>. <laughs> uh, all right, so what are, we, what are we hitting next? What do you want to talk about? Origin stories. I know, besides that. Uh, after that, pork fists. Yeah. yeah. How many pork fists have you guys been to? Um, Three for me. I think my first one was like 2008. So I guess it would be like seven. Wow. Yeah. Even though I lived here since 2006, I didn't go to Pork Fest the first couple of years. Why not? It wasn't think, really that big. I think that it had then, something it? to do. Like it was only on the weekend. And for some reason, I didn't want to drive up to Gunstock because I had too much to do over the weekend or something. I was in medical school at the time. So it was like, oh, okay. Really busy. Wish I'd gone. <laughs> Like for me, I actually moved out here before ever stepping foot in New Hampshire. Like I never gone to Pork Fest or Liberty Forum or anything like that. Oh, you right had on. listened to LRN, right? Yeah, yeah. I visited Keene for like five hours, and then a month later, I moved. Wow, that's so. I hear you. Same here. Didn't do a Liberty Forum or anything like that. It's just like, yep. But we'll talk about that, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure, <laughs> for sure. For yeah. Oh my guys, god. So, Rob, you. I'm sorry. I go, go ahead. You. Go ahead. So you listened to LRN before you got here, right? Yeah. Did you feel any of it was like oversold? Hmm. In regards to some things, yes, some things, others. I think in regards to the activism that is portrayed to happen, yes. Mm -hmm. um, there honestly used in regard, to be more, in regards, more activism. In regards to the community aspect, no. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's oversold at all. I, I think, think it's undersold. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. living amongst so many people that are like-minded, you know, that's like I can actually be whoever I want to be and as long as I'm not like doing any harm to another person, they don't care and they're accepting for the most part. Like that wasn't like that when, you know, yeah. back where I used to live. The, yeah, the I like that group concept of people of I was in. Years. Like, yeah, it's like living sure. here, like a shy year to me is like one year experience of my normal life. But here, that ha those experiences just happen in a very short amount of months where I literally feel like I've lived like over five right. years here. Right. And I've only been here just over a year. Right. And sometimes it gets really intense. Sometimes it goes down to two months. Sometimes it goes, sometimes it goes up to like three or four months. Like it, it, it there's no like finite and it's kind of different for just like a poly's different for everyone. Like Shire years are kind of different for everyone too. Yeah. yeah. But it's definitely a, uh, it's, it's fun to calculate your age in Shire years. <laughs> well, it's a personal thing. Like, I've been here about a year and a half. I'll be about two years in August. And I've grown so much just from living here. Just when it comes to, like, like professional responsibility, financial responsibility, the kind of social scene around here, how to, mm. how to characterize myself, how, what, what my reputation looks like. You know, all these things, it's just been... You evolve. Catalyzed. You evolve as a human being exactly. really quickly. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I don't recognize myself in the mirror from when I moved here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I literally don't recognize myself in the mirror when I moved here. Mm. She remembers me. Yeah, she was there. I mean, we all, yeah, we all change a lot. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, I think so.
Welcome back to the Rebel Love Show. And uh, Pork Fest is coming up. And I know you guys have been to multiple different Pork Fests. Uh, I always like to see, well, what's your favorite moment of all time from any Pork Fest? Um, I don't want you to go, oh, Brian, you're looking at Brian. What is your favorite moment of any pork fest ever? Like Ooh. craziest, funnest, <laughs> Brian's best making moment. a face that I know well. <laughs> well <laughs> so like that that's being asked without prefacing, do I like pork fest? But um, I'll just... I'm assuming you, uh, you have a beef with pork fest. I do, but I'll, I'll maybe save that for, for later. Okay. Um, but as far as like good times, I mean, the, the, the big gay dance party is everything. Like that yeah, is... Yeah, that was going to be my yeah, favorite it, moment too. But I'll just say quickly, it's the best and it's also the worst moment of the whole thing. It's the best because everybody's free. Everybody's libertining it up. It's great. It's the worst because the next morning, nobody, everybody acts like that never happened. And, you know, or like a bunch of people that are just like really, you know, kind of stuck up and whatever, and then act very conservative uh, around the, the rest of their lives, the rest of the time, they just want to pretend it didn't happen. And so uh, that's, that's what makes it the worst is that why can't people just act like that? all the time. Why can't people just wear balloons around their junk all the time, you know? So, so it's the best and the worst. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can see that perspective in regards to, uh, you know, not being yourself completely, but that's mm -hmm. where you can, it's, I view kind of, uh, I view pork fest as somewhat of a, uh, like a spiritual journey or like a pilgrimage to where, you know, for one week we can try and live as free as we can for that one week. Uh, prayer no. mat's kind of the yoga mat for Stephanie's classes, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There you go. You know, you're facing one direction. You know, <laughs> but uh, no, like for me, like pork, that's what pork fest really was for me last year. Now it's my first, and I can't wait till uh, this upcoming pork fest. And Shared, you only went to one, right? Yeah, that was, that was your man. first one. Yeah, I started my own church at my first pork fest, <laughs> so I definitely think I had the full experience as far as like religiosity goes. I honestly don't think you even left pork fest. To be perfectly honest, I'm two percent sure that I never left pork fest. I'm still standing <laughs> by the campfire, tripping on acid, scared shitless of uh, vermin supreme, walking around with a big boot on his head. He he can't be intimidating with that boot. If you're tripping on acid, vermin supreme is the single scariest individual you've ever seen. Even if you're not. <laughs> On acid, <laughs> it can be a little yeah. intimidating. He's so funny. Uh, I don't know if you guys. Uh, I don't. I don't think I saw you at Liberty Forum. Yeah, I mean, we were there. We were there. So many people's path I didn't even cross. There's so many people there. But he was at Liberty Forum, and he had his Bitcoin address for like political donations written down, and he was singing it to people, to the tune of the ABCs. <laughs> His Bitcoin right. address? Yeah, yeah. but hold on. Now, I saw him. <laughs> now, that's creative. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah. It, it is. But I saw him there, and he he pulls out a MacBook Pro. And I'm just like, <laughs> brother, don't tell me you're you're not part of the system, and you're pulling out an Apple laptop. Right. You know? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Verma Supreme, he's a... Uh, that was the first time I ever met Vermin Supreme was actually at Liberty Forum. I never met him before. No, no, no I take it back. I did meet him at Pork Fest briefly, but I didn't like to get to talk to him much at Pork Fest. Yeah, he and I, he and I go back a bit. Like I went to his birthday party and stuff, and he's really cool. He's he was really cool he guy. was he was great in uh, Doge Fest. Yeah, yeah, the episode two of Shire Dude. Yeah, uh, Doge, Doge Fest. Doge Fest. Yeah, if you didn't know, at last year's Pork Fest, Doge took over. Yeah. All right. I actually ended up boycotting most of the vendors in Agora Valley because they wouldn't, uh, because they uh, were only taking Doge. And I feel as if Doge is the uh, cancer on the cryptocurrencies. <laughs> and it needs to die. I agree. Yeah, <laughs> so with you. I'm not a fan. There was this, all right, real quick. There, Dogecoin, right? That, that's, yeah. Th there was this thing where apparently the Jamaican bobsled team mm -hmm. last year, got like some $30,000 worth of Dogecoin or something. And I said, it's like, look, I don't believe that this is happening. I don't think that this is real at all. Yeah, yeah. And we couldn't find any like TV, like there were no videos about it. It was the, like the only evidence that it actually happened was like this Reddit post from the Dogecoin. People. Yeah. There were, there were like screenshots, but those, those can be faked. I mean, that, that, you know, nothing on the internet is real. And so I, yeah, I was lost. And in fact, on the show Sex and Science Hour, the United States. Yeah, we Stephanie. talked about it. And we were both like really skeptical. And all these people emailed us and were like, what the fuck? You don't believe it's real? You guys are the scammers. But I think that they were all scammers. Yeah. I, I just, I don't, I, I don't know. I, I'm lost. I mean, the internet can do this. It can make things seem so much bigger. Well, uh, like than later really it came yeah. out that all this money that they gave to charity from the Doge community, that was like, 
payoffs from this one guy who was running that big exchange, the, the uh, MitPal or whatever. The, the guy had a bunch of aliases. He was a total scammer. He was running this exchange and he like basically took the money and ran. But a lot of what he did was like give a lot of charitable donations and stuff in doge and like he he gave like huge tips to like thousand dollar tips to people to like basically like hush money to like stop them from blowing the whistle on him it was this huge hush scandal. puppy money yeah exactly <laughs> hush puppy money <laughs> wow what about you stephanie what's a uh pork fest favorite moment well i always teach yoga classes at pork fest i've been doing that for like the last five years and those are like last year there was this gorgeous I knew it. Girl. <laughs> all these women are wearing tank tops and Stephanie's facing all of them. No, she like <laughs> she was really like graceful and cute and like kind of young and she took my yoga class and it was a class like that was basically like building up to a peak pose which was a split. And the splits are hard for pe people to do and when they can actually they're able to do it for the first time they're like, "Oh my god, I did it. I didn't think I could do it." So I did the class and I took her through the split. And after the class she says to me, "That was the best yoga class I've ever taken." And I felt so good. <laughs> wow. So that's that's one of my favorite pork fest moments. The other one was dancing at Buzz's big gay dance party and me being like the quiet, you know, stereotypical like type A med student personality. I never really would do something like that before, but I I shook it <laughs> and I got like some best dancer thing and I got silver. Nice. <laughs> the pictures are amazing. Now, like for like this pork fest uh, for the big gay dance party, um, we we've been like for, for literally for like even though uh, my my rebel mistress right there she hasn't uh, been to a pork fest yet even though she's done uh, literally every single liberty event that has uh, occurred bef since uh, pork fest and now uh, so she's like build up her merit badges of like you know <laughs> what to go to uh, and uh, we've been talking about like what we're gonna wear for like the big gay dance party and stuff like that you know she's she's putting the band hammer down on it um, but I've been thinking. I haven't said it on there, but I want to say it anyways. Uh, I, I didn't think, well, I thought the gayest thing I could do is just grow my beard out. But at the very end, right before uh, right before the dance party, just uh, shave mutton chops into it. <laughs> you know? Uh, I Why figured, is that gay? Because mutton chops are gay, aren't they? That's a gay thing. Not that I know uh, of. Wait a minute, I mean, wait ask, a, no. ask a real <laughs> no, gay guy. Hold, hold on, hold on. No, no, no. Let me kill my stir. Has mutton chops. That, that man is not gay. Okay. But I'm pretty sure like the gayest thing is to like suck another guy's dick. Yeah. But if you say Slayer while you're doing it, it's not gay. <laughs> That's what I've heard. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the gayest thing is to be attracted to other dudes. <laughs> yeah. Let's put it that way. <laughs> well, that being that aside from the, the dance party, I was, I don't know. I thought that'd be something crazy to do. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to think of different ideas to do to be, cause you gotta be outrageous for it. Right. So you gotta, well, no, I see, I don't think you have to be outrageous. Like, cause that's part of the stereotype is that gay people are just like totally flaming, but they're not, like, not all of them. Anyway. Yeah. But it's also a stereotype of that party. Yeah. It's yeah. Diet pink. Diet, diet pink. The beer broke really long. I, I might just do I that. I don't think you have to one up anybody. Just have fun. Let us know if we should, uh, if I should dye my beard pink for big gay dance party people to get that. You have to bleach it first. I don't know if I can bleach my beard. Well, I mean, the pink color, you've got pretty dark hair. Yeah. I don't think it would stick. Probably not. What do you think, Ann? You think you, you, think you can pull it off? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> love she, she loves my beard. She doesn't want anything to happen to it. So... How long does it take to grow a beard to that length? I uh, well, I've been trimming it a lot, mm. uh, just to get a better uh, f uh, fill of it, better form. Uh, even though I do need to trim today because it's got a little long, little straggles. Uh, it took me. I know exactly how long. I uh, I quit my job back in October without anything lined up, my old job, and then I got hired two days later. Well, I had an interview two days later at the job I'm at now. I shaved then, so that was the third week of October. <laughs> yes yeah i uh <laughs> i had a fun time passing a certain test and i did pass that with flying colors <laughs> yeah um but that was the uh that's how long it's been growing this out okay, it would be so a lot longer six though. months yeah but it would be yeah. a lot longer had i not kept trimming it so right. i been trimming it wow. to like fill in right otherwise it'd be really straggly yeah because hairs grow in cycles yeah so like some of them fall out and some of them don't start growing in right away so like when you shave it, it's not going to fully come in. 
Yeah. Well, sometimes I need a refresh, though. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. Like, this is the longest I've ever grown it without shaving it. Usually, I go like a few months and just shave it off because I get too frustrated trimming. But now I'm actually concentrating and building it out. But it's more so because I got a receding hairline and, and yeah, you got to draw the attention. Oh, I want to, I want to do the nuclear option at some forehead. point. Yeah, yeah, don't, yeah, don't yeah. worry, it's, it's going to happen um, <laughs> sooner or later. But I, I need this to offset that. Yeah, 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 for me. I don't know how you pull it off without the beard. You, Stephanie likes me having a beard, but I just, I can't deal with it, man. Like, I mean, I like both. Yeah. To be yeah, yeah. perfectly See, I, clear, I like you every way. Yeah. <laughs> So I've been doing the same amount now. Lucky you. How old are you now? 31. 31. Okay. Yeah. So I've had a receding hairline since I was like 15. Wow. Like it was really, really bad. It's just one of those terrible Jewish genetic things. And um, so, yeah, like se ever since I was 17, I've had a shaved head. So wow. I don't know. I think it's just like maybe that's why it works is just because it's been so normal for me. It just. I told I told Shire dude here if he just ke keeps a goatee I'll shave my head just so I can call him number one. <laughs> right on, yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Stephanie and I just finished watching the Next Generation again, all seven seasons. We rewatched the whole series. Yeah, it was great. It was nice. Awesome. It's very libertarian. Like I watched it Except a lot when I was like ten years socialist. old. Yeah. And I really think it it gave me like a lot of libertarian memes. What? And. What she, what what she do? <laughs> what? Forget it. Okay. <laughs> so I think I feel like I made a compromise. I just upgraded my phone. This is what almost three years old. Yeah. And I decided, and I ended up working a deal with Verizon do like a contract, like a payment contract for upgrade. Okay. So it's like, ah, now I'm rocking for two more years. I wanted to start looking into like, like black phone into like the, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Bluetooth phone. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Other stuff. And I was like, ah, all right, all right. You got me for two more years. Yeah. Well, you know, in, in my opinion, like, it's in, like in really absolute watch, reality. Right? No. Well, and then there's that. The really smartphone is a lost about this at all. There's yeah, I no, I want to hit on that. that. Even black this phone, is, might be like last skeptical segment. about. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like We're I not going to show you to you, though. Really secure, <laughs> you really hunker okay. down on. It's all a secret. So like smartphones, like <laughs> Is it because of the radio? It's because of the bass band. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bum, yeah. bum, bum. So you might as well. Oh, getting all itchy. Welcome back to the Rebel Love Show. And uh, whenever we have tech experts on the show, oh boy, I've, I've been asking a couple questions. Because everyone doesn't want to use Facebook Messenger and stuff like that. My thing is, it's great for group chats. Like I'm in a lot of different group chats. Is there some sort of group chat encrypted communication, an app of some sort or another that I can use on my smartphone just as easily as Facebook Messenger that's encrypted? but in a group chat setting. Does that even exist? Yes. And in fact, you know what? Stephanie and I were listening to your show and I heard you asking someone, maybe it was it, Brett it, was on or something. I, Somebody I think, was... Yeah, I asked them. I also asked... Um, I asked uh, oh, Zach and, Zach, oh, Zach and uh, Neil. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's when we were hearing. And I was just like, I was literally screaming at you <laughs> through, <laughs> through, <laughs> through the, you know, whatever we were listening to it on. And, but, uh, but yes, there is. I can vouch for that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, there is, and I'm glad you asked uh, because this is something I really wish a lot of people would use. It's called Telegram. Okay. Okay. And this is now people can get into like really hardcore security guys can argue with me about the how much they because it's using a new algorithm. Just I'm trying to keep it like non technical, a new encryption algorithm that no one's ever used before. So a lot of people don't like that because it's not tried and true, right? But regardless, the guy that runs that that actually runs this app is an anarchist. He's an he actually, he's an ANCAP. He's an anarcho-capitalist, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, from Russia, his name's Pavel Durov. He's famous for creating VK, uh, which is kind of the Facebook of Russia. Uh, he's not in charge of that anymore, so don't use VK, but he's still in charge of Telegram. And Telegram will let you do group messaging. It'll let you send, uh, you know, pictures. It'll let you send one gigabyte files over it. And what's really great is that it works on your smartphone, iOS or Android. Uh, but then it also has a Windows uh, 
client, you know, just a, a desktop client that's really, really solid. It has a web interface. Even if you had a Chromebook, there's a Chrome app for it. I mean, this thing is so cross-platform. It works so well. Uh, I, I love it. In fact, the people in, in Keen use it uh, pretty pretty actively. It's uh, it, it's making the rounds. So Telegram, that's what I recommend. Telegram, all right. Yeah, it does groups. It does everything. It does it really, really well. Bitcoin, too. too Telebit. Yeah, you can actually send Bitcoin with it using uh, Telebit. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. What do you guys use for uh, encrypted for communication? For sexting each other? other? Yeah, Telegram. Sure, just Telegram? I mean, we're usually in the same room, <laughs> to be perfectly <laughs> honest. But yeah, tele we do use Telegram. Yeah, I've had to send some pictures at times, and uh, we use Telegram for that. So, now, I mean, I will say this one more thing, is that when it's on your phone, you can do what's called a, a secret chat. When it's okay. on your computer, you can't do this. And, yeah. Or I think when it's in groups, you can't do it either. But there's like where it encrypts it at client side on the phone. It's where otherwise it normally sends the message to the server and it encrypts it there and whatever. Uh, so, you know, if people want to get into arguments about the security of it, look, just getting people away from Facebook is good is really good enough, uh, in my opinion. So, but Telegram, I I, I trust it. Okay. Um, yeah, because I've been looking for something to use like that. It's probably just getting people on there to do, like, like for text for texting, like Mateus here, MVG got us on to using uh, text secure. And I use that with multiple different porcupines now. Um, even though some people in this room don't even text. Well, yeah, here's the thing. I don't use text secure because I don't even use text messaging and I don't actually use a phone. Well, that's like, like red phone, text secure. That, yeah, I mean, yeah. that makes, is yeah. it for security concerns or do you just not just want to? I hate that form of communication, both of those forms. I mean, as far as texting goes, you can just message someone on, you know, using data. Yeah. Well, that's How do you I, prefer to communicate? Actually, Facebook message. That's that's where I get most of my information. Yeah, because... This so, is, go ahead. Uh, so many people in this community like still are on Facebook, so it's yeah. hard to get glued to Facebook. Yeah, yeah, especially with the events. Like so much, uh, we're talking about social things here, in Manch. Like you get the events by being in Facebook groups, and you get the event, uh, right. you know, massive uh, invites, and that's how you know where everything everything that's going on is because you're all you're in these groups, and you get these events. Uh, these invites. Yeah, it's in, it's the incredible irony of using Facebook to try and end the state. It's like, yeah. <laughs> it's like no, the, I, I the state's see, best friend and you're using it. <laughs> Not you, but, you know, I mean, the indefinite article. Yeah. Well, like for me, like for us, we, we live very public lives. Sure. You know, and, and at the end of the day, don't worry, I want to have encrypted communication a lot better between the people I love. But at the same time, I live a public life. Like, they're going to come get me. I mean, I'm on radio. I'm, on, I'm doing this right now. I'm talking about what normal life is anyway. So it's not like I'm not public about it. You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, certainly. But I mean, it's good to have best practices in any way. I mean, like this is an argument that can go both ways. Like some people will say that the best way to protect yourself is to actually be completely public. You know yeah. what I mean? So that way people know you and that way when the government says some bullshit about you, everybody can say, well, that's not true. Look, we have all this evidence. And I get that argument and, and, and that makes some degree of sense. But at the same time, uh, I think a, a very strong argument can be made that you know, civilization and technology, like privacy is, is very much a byproduct of that. It, it's something that comes along with the game. There's uh, the, a basic human need for privacy. I mean, I like, I don't, want to, I don't want people to see me, like, pooping, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be public about everything. Well, I mean, like, in regards to uh, being public and being private, that should mm -hmm. be, again, that should always be the person's uh, choice. You know, if you want to be 100% public or 100% private right that, that's your call that's your choice that shouldn't be put upon against you if you want to be private and you're forced to be public with you know different so, uh, social networking apps that's a whole nother situation sure yeah so i mean like the option should be there but the option's not going to be there if everybody you know if the market speaks and nobody wants encryption but i think i mean but i think it's crazy because that's like saying to somebody well do you want your walls to be opaque or transparent you know and everybody's going to say they want it to be opaque yeah. Uh, and, and it's the same thing. I mean, one could argue that walls is what allowed for the advancement of ideas, you know, in a very real sense, even though some people will say, oh, well, no, it's the openness of ideas. Yeah, I, I don't, myself, I don't buy that. But anyway. I hear you. Um, now, uh, kind of going uh, from that, we talked about origins a little bit uh, earlier. Um, we'll start with you, Brian. What, how, how did you end up here across the, a table from us in the Shire? Like, how, how did that happen for you? Oh, boy. So, I guess it was 1980, and my parents had sex. I don't like to think about it, <laughs> but it happened. And no, <laughs> no. <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, so pretty much, well, I was in, I mean, as far as, you know, my, my path to liberty, to anarchy, whatever word you want to use, um, I was actually in the U.S. Army 
Um, and I joined the U.S. Army because of the 9-11 Truth Movement, because I encountered the 9-11 Truth Movement at the time as, like, they were kind of racist. Like, they were saying, because I'm ethnically Jewish, and they were saying the Jews were behind it and all this stuff. And I said, oh, that's bullshit. And so, you know, I was going to go overseas and, you know, take care of some business and say, no, you know, Jews are the ones that are going to solve this stuff, you know, or whatever. Yeah, I mean, stuff like that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and so I unfortunately joined the Army, and I got out of that after two years, had a crisis of conscience while I was in there. And then, uh, you know, just down the line, eventually, uh, you know, like got interested to some degree. And I mean, when you're in the military, you can't help but be interested in what's going on in the world stage. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, Ron Paul comes along or comes around. Um, but then at one point I heard Judge Andrew Napolitano. He was on Stossel. Okay. This is a few years ago. Yeah. And I was living in New York and he, he got asked the question, he was he was uh, debating with P.J. O'Rourke, who's this other libertarian thinker. Okay, both of these guys are libertarian thinkers, and and he was asked like, you know, what do we if there's no government, what do we put in place of a navy? And Judge Andrew Napolitano said, "Who says we need a navy?" Wow. And it, and it just hit me. I was like, well, right, you know, who says we need a navy? And then after that, you know, you read Lysander Spooner, and it's like, did you sign the Constitution? No. It's like, well, then how the hell does it apply to you? Yeah, right. How does that apply to me? And so not long after, you know, moving to New Hampshire. For Andrew Napolitano, I want to ask you this question. Do yeah. you think that he's just an anarchist that hasn't come out of the closet yet? I think he's come out of the closet. Um, I, In fact, I, I've pretty much heard him say, I mean, that, that he doesn't believe in a lot of these institutions. Uh, but, you know, you're not going to hear that on Fox. No, no, of course not. Uh, I used to be a big Andrew Napolitano fan. I used to listen to him uh, before I kind of got my awakening. My, I kind of went down a similar path. Mm -hmm. I, used to, uh, I used to watch Andrew Napolitano's, uh, was it Night Watchman or something like that on Fox Business? For, he oh, was on yeah, for like yeah. Six Freedom months. Watch. Freedom Watch. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I used to watch that too. That was like an internet show. That was really yeah, ahead it started of its time. That, yeah. yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, um, I mean, he, he doesn't even appeal to the Constitution. He appeals to the Declaration of Independence. He says, like, that's, that's rule one in the U.S. That's what you go to. So, yeah, I don't see him buying government. Neither do I. But he was definitely a, a force for me waking up, too. Yeah. And we'll be back with Stephanie's origin story for the last segment. I was actually, um, one of the biggest things that woke me up was uh, I saw a speech that Napolitano did at Mises. And you were there, weren't you? Yeah, you were, you were actually there. Yeah, and um, his whole talk there just like blew me away. Like, this, he's, like everything he said was so accurate and true uh, about the Constitution and everything like, else. The, the, the topic was like, was the Constitution worth it? And right. He had a big comparison with the Articles of, of Confederation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even, even just being colonized, he kind of went on about that. And someone made a comment because he was uh, trashing the Constitution. Someone made a comment and says, hey, you sound a lot like an anarchist. And he says, I've never, uh, I don't deny that or I've never denied that. Like, yeah, you don't yeah. hear me denying that. Denying yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think the official stance at the Mises Institute is that we should still be under the Queen. <laughs> like, I, I mean, like literally, they, uh, uh, Leland Yeager wrote that in, in uh, what, what is the, he's a, he's a Austrian. yeah, Le Leland B. Yeager. Um, he oh, was, yeah. he was like, uh, the translator for Mises. Oh, the uh, I'm not sure on that end, but he, he wrote, is the market a test of truth and beauty or something like that oh, back in 76. Right. And I think it was chapter 26 where he talks about that. And then Hoppe, which not that I'd want to quote him, but uh, Hoppe talks about the fact that we'd be freer under the queen and all this stuff. And so actually, like, that's, I don't even call it the U.S. anymore. I call it colonies. I like the democracy that got into it. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I'll take God Save the Queen. <laughs> Well, there's certainly an interesting history there to be considered. You know, yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can call it the history and it's totally different ways if you want. But. I'm going to end up like... <laughs> well, if you do, there'll be tree hits. Shit. Anything else you want to hit? We still have more time to kill. Mm -hmm. So pretty much if we do have like one, uh, one point we left. didn't touch on that. I know, we enough. didn't get to that. I know. I mean, we kind of like, we're almost we, there. I know. We, the and conversation we're like, went a different way. It was hard to get back to that. The conversation, conversation, the conversation flowed elsewhere. The conversation is like a bucking bronco. 
<laughs> well, yeah. sometimes you have to go it with the really flow, is. though. You can't just try. You can't try and control the flow. You just kind of have yeah. to go with it wherever it takes. Yeah, the second you. you try to steer, you're gonna get thrown off. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys do bonus content after the show ends, or do you we just- could? We could. If we you want. talked about doing that before. I mean, so we could go into Dude, that. And- talk about your thing. You want to talk about afterwards? Sure. We can stay on. I mean, the LRN okay. fee would be off yeah, if cool. you want to yeah, for a little bit. We can, we can go into detail a little bit more. It'd be bonus content. Well, it depends on how juicy it is. I don't know. My eyes are getting super itchy. Like, I'm, my allergies are really bad. Oh, well, late. then maybe we don't have to do bonus content. Though, yeah. it would be an honor if you guys right afterwards can record a, a, a bumper for us. <laughs> what does it say? I don't know. Just Just say something about the Rebel Love Show or something like that so we can throw in like a commercial or something. Yeah, I'll okay. do it. If you don't have to. No, yeah. I'll do it. Yeah. I usually get paid for this. But I will do it for you for free. I'll, I'll give you some drugs. How's that sound? I don't want any drugs, man. Drugs. <laughs> are they like super? Are oh. they okay? They're they're like so itchy right now. Sorry, love. It's like really hard to stop from rubbing it. Oh, I know. I know. Yeah, you know that show, The Rebel Love Show? The show that killed Stephanie Murphy? Oh, my God. Don't don't <laughs> die in this show. Like, Shit. we already have haters as it is. People, <laughs> people would be, like, you know, burning their phones that from the podcast app because you died on our show. <laughs> what do the haters say? What do the haters what, say? What form does their hate take? Our haters don't try hard enough. Um, we, well, we've got Newbie66, who sometimes is really nice and sometimes is really mean. Yeah. He's like, um, I don't know. He's like a frenemy. He is a friend of me. Yeah. A friend of me. Yeah. That's that true. word sounds a lot like come... frenulum to me. <laughs> and welcome back, guys, to the Rebel Love Show. It is our last segment here before the. Uh, the end of it here and uh stephanie we talked about brian's origin story i'm curious how did you uh end up across the table from us here in the shire so i could tell the like the story that i've told like a million times before that's like kind of conventional you know libertarian origin story like i read atlas shrugged when i was in high school and then i started like reading lou rockwell and mises.org and then i found out about the free state project and then before i graduated from college i moved here Blah blah blah. That's that's true. But I mean, the, give us something juicy. The real the real thing that I think a lot of libertarians like maybe don't acknowledge is like what are some of the hidden motivations or like what are some of the unconscious things that might have been motivating you to become interested in liberty? And for me, it was that I didn't. I just never felt like I got. I never felt like adu- adults, especially you know my parents, but like a, a lot of other adults. I never felt like they trusted me to be like competent to just do normal activities when I was a kid. And I was always like wanting more, more trust, the freedom to, to just do things on my own and be trusted to do them right. And I didn't get enough of that. And I think that really drove me to just take a, a look at liberty in general. You know, when I got to the age of like, you know, 16 or 15 or something like that. So then from there, I started, you know, like reading all the like conventional stuff, you know, like, like I said, Atlas Shrugged and I got into Mises and Lou Rockwell and stuff like that. Um, but it wasn't until years later when I actually moved to New Hampshire that I kind of realized, like, so I kind of had this, um, after moving to New Hampshire, I started like participating in politics and quickly realized that I was rotten to the core, didn't want to be involved at all. Yeah. And then I had this sort of crisis and I was like, well, what do I do if I don't want to be politically active? You know, like, what am I supposed to do? I don't want to get arrested and go to jail. I saw it as this like false dichotomy between you either have to do civil disobedience or you have to be a political activist. And neither of those were things I wanted to do. So then I started just getting more into the like personal freedom aspects of stuff. At first it was like, you know, exploring different models of relationships and like questioning kind of like social norms and that kind of thing. And then it read, led me into the realm of um, psychology and, you know, like healing past um, trauma and like emotional pain and all that stuff. And so, yeah, I guess, I guess I think like liberty is an inside job <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you got to be free 
inside before you try to free the world. So that's kind of what I'm working on right now. I'm not doing much of the free in the world kind of thing. <laughs> well, that's the same thing. Like for me, I uh, like coming here, I already had the ideology of living free. Mm-hmm. Um, but coming here, I, like I, I, a lot of people already know this on the show, but uh, I discovered uh, I was polyamorous uh, about a year ago. I always kind of always felt that way, but at the same time, I was anti-poly when I moved How did here. you, like, what was your aha moment? How did My you get, aha get moment? there? <laughs> yeah. Um, or did you have it? Or was it like a gradual thing? It was kind of a gradual thing in regards to being around a lot of different poly people here in this community. And uh, I decided just to give it a try. It kind of fell in, it, it kind of fell into my lap because I literally started dating uh, two uh, two women at the same time, literally the, the, within one weekend, Were two they different dates. identified as poly? One was who happened to be a loco who had an ex in the community, which is weird to begin with because like you can't escape like the poly like community <laughs> here in Manchester. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, another one wasn't, but that was like my first for- tr- foray into it. And I've been doing that literally ever since because it just felt so right, especially the the honesty and the communication that you have in that relationship in those relationships or tenfold more than I've ever had in monogamous relationship like the the uh, the loving uh, caring of each other and wanting the other partner to be happy and having all that communication that doesn't happen in a in any well I'm sure it happens in monogamous relationships but that never happened for it me it does in some if if you're conscious about it you know and I think like there's definitely problems with monogamy you know especially like a lot of people pick on the idea that when you're monogamous with somebody, it's like there's certain things you can't talk about, like if you're attracted to another person. And that's that's a problem. But I think there is a way to like, if you really want to be monogamous, you can do it with that same honesty that maybe a poly person who's more more aware of it and more conscious of it has. It's just that you have to you have to practice it consciously and you have to want to implement it, you know. It yeah. doesn't just it doesn't just happen. <laughs> you well, know, I'm curious. Work. You know, uh, I know you, you call yourself like a poly activist, right? Well, um, I I consider myself that for the simple fact that uh, I don't hide who I am, no sure. matter where I'm at. So even if I'm at work, like I have this tattoo that says "Love Free," and I, I work in sales. All right. Now, mind you, this has multiple, you know, uh, meanings, meanings yeah. besides like the show and the whole Ron Paul, blah blah blah. Yeah. But it's also. Uh, because this this kind of represents the ideology I had when I got here. The one on my right, the live free. The mm-hmm. one on my left really represents the other rabbit hole that went down when I got here. And sure. I, so I'll have a conversation about being poly, like to you know a customer to ask me what that really means, what what's the meaning behind this, and I'll be pr- upfront honest with it. I'm upfront honest with my coworkers. Right on. You know. So well, now I'm curious. What do you think? And for me, it's up in the air. I'm not, I'm not totally certain on this, but like, do you think poly is genetic? Do you think it's some, like being polyamorous is something that's genetic or do you think it's something everybody's capable of? I don't think everyone's capable of it. Yeah. No, it's, I don't think it's for everyone. Is it something you're born with? Maybe. That, that could be a case. That could be something like you're born that way. Like yeah, I've see, always I'm had, a- I've always, in all the monogamous relationships I was ever, ever in, I always had attraction to other people, but I didn't. I always felt as if I'm cheating or being, you know, hurting that person by violating the relationship by going, you know, flirting with this other person. I right. think it's pretty rare to find even people who would consider themselves like in monogamous relationships who, who couldn't, who could honestly say that they're not ever attracted to anybody else. It's True. just, you know, what do they do about it? But right? you feel, I used to feel guilty for like having those feelings or uh, even thinking about it. Yeah. You know? Who wants but, to feel guilty, right? Yeah. And now I, it, one thing I love about this really, uh, this uh, lifestyle I live now is like, I can have my cake and eat it too. You know, I can, I can be in a very, very, very loving relationship. Like again, like, you know, me and my robe mistress right there, we're going to be spending the rest of our life together. Um, but at the same time, like I can, I can be with someone else too, if I want to, you know, and like if a door opens, I can, op- I can go through that door too. I don't have to like cut off all these other life opportunities that may or may not happen. So for me, like this, this uh, lifestyle literally opens up the door to all these life experiences that I would never have had, had I stayed monogamous. Right. That makes any sense. Yeah. I mean, like, no, it does make sense. I, I've been doing it for the last year and the life experience I've had going through that for better or worse I wouldn't change it for anything because that's it's a help. It's helped me evolve as a human being because you're having, when you have those multiple relationships at the same time, it's as if you're living twice at the same time. You know, you have a lot more experiences than you would just a normal relationship. Have you ever had a situation where um, a partner that maybe you were already with or 
let's let's just make it general. A, a situation where there was a previous relationship and then a new relationship started and then the previous partner felt hurt or like left out because the new, the energy of the new relationship was kind of like bleeding over and you were taking a lot of time with the new person or whatever. Uh, see, here's my thing. I, uh, I, whenever for me, uh, my free time, the time I'm spending with another human being is the most valuable commodity that I can ever give another human being. Forget money or anything else. The time I spend in front of another human being, is the, that's, that's, my, that's my currency. That's what I can sure. give another human being. Sure. Um, and when I'm in multiple relationships, I dedicate a certain amount of time of the week to that person. Like you, you have my unfolded attention for this time. Like we'll put in the Google Calendar. Like I, Google Calendars. Like that that's a lifesaver in regards to it. Like sharing your calendar, like where you know where everyone's at. Um, but dedicating that time to another human being, that's that's the thing I always tell that every person. Like I will be there for you when I need to be. And I'll always, be, you know, I will do, I will dedicate my time to you so you're not feeling, no well, what matter what other relationship I'm in. your calendar's full and you want to squeeze another one in? Like See, the other ones have to give up something. I right? made that mistake mm -hmm. uh, before. Uh, I know my limits. Uh, I can't go past three. Mm -hmm. Two's good. Two's really good. I know, I know he's point he's holding up a five. Yes, I know. That's too much. I, I overdid it. <laughs> Did you have five partners at one time? At one point. Wow. Yeah. That's that a was lot, too yeah. much. That was way too much. I can never do that again. Yeah. Two to three. Yeah, two's yeah. a good balance. Three's kind of pushing it. Two's a good balance. I had two girlfriends at once and I just knew like no way, can't cannot do more. That's wow, five. Yeah, that, 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 that's, that not was very short lived. Deep relationships. I had th I had three for like a long time, which was amazing. Um, and uh, but two is a good balance. Three, three's kind of were they of three it. like um? Were you all living together, or was it like, like what was how how much time did you spend with each one? Was it the I, same? Amount I would usually spend one? at least two days a week per. Uh, partner when I had three so that literally left one day by myself or something week. yeah <laughs> only, so yeah well the, at least one of those relationships had some distance in it right yeah one was uh down in mass so that, uh who's now living with me anyways uh <laughs> coming to the end of the show uh where can uh everyone find uh both uh you guys? uh best best site for me would be zog.ninja zog.ninja that's, that's you can find sovereign tech all that stuff there Yep, and I'm at smvoice.info. Shire Dude. It's on with ShireDude.com. Go check me out at dlevel.com, guys. Peace. Cool. All right. Awesome. We, we doing any right. after show or... Uh... What was the thing you wanted to talk about? That was it. We got into polyamory. That was oh, the yeah. one that I wanted oh, to break cool. into. And we it could just talk happened more naturally. We can if you like. Let me, let me just disconnect from... Uh, yeah. Let me stop the recording on... Uh, but we're still uh, on YouTube. On speak. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're still on YouTube. Cool. Stop recording. One thing that I wanted to bring up um, was that I didn't know what polyamory was until I went to Libertopia 2013, and I accidentally stumbled into a polyamory talk. At Libertopia? And, and Stephanie Murphy was giving was one of the panelists on the talk. Oh, no kidding. True story. Yeah. You inspired, you, you introduced. I didn't know what polyamory was until Libertopia 2013 when I accidentally... Stumbled into that, like I was walking by it, and then the older uh, lady who was doing the the panel with you, I don't remember what her name was, but she was like, "Oh, you're in the right place. Come on over here," and like I was like, "Okay," and I sat down. Oh my god, you were there. Yeah, I that was like the worst panel ever. <laughs> I hated that panel. I was so annoyed. We had to like move, and like yeah. the audio was terrible, but like I had never heard what polyamory was before that. Wow. And I just kind of stumbled on it. Wow. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah. I feel embarrassed because I feel like that was a horrible panel. But Wasn't that like the audio was like never released or something? Because yeah, was, it wasn't even really recorded because there was then, like, like something else going there was on. There's this girl in the audience who just started talking about like, yeah, we're all connected, man. And, like, she oh was boy, so weird. I remember she was, that like, waving her arms. Do you remember her? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what she was doing, but yeah, it was far out. There's some really fun people at Libertopia. Yeah, yeah, those are really weird. <laughs> fun events. is a really nice way to describe. It. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One thing I see with Polly that I don't like the um, I don't like the uh, stereotypes. You know what I'm saying? We're like, oh, it's just all about the sex, Polly fuckery. Yeah, and yeah. It, that's not it at all. Like there, that I mean, sex well, is part of people, it, but it's not for some all people. Of it. it is focused. That's what the focus is. You know? True. I yeah, mean, but then like, aren't is there you more of a swinger? Of yeah, that'd be more of swinging or whatnot. So. Um. Because single I don't, people can be in on that. I don't know. I mean, I feel like there are people who identify as poly who 
like they there's an element of relationship in there, but they're not a swinger. They're not like just they're not just trying to have sex with a bunch. And swingers is kind of like a specific thing. Like it's usually married heterosexual couples. Yeah, it's usually couples. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but single people can be involved in that. I mean. They can, but they're kind of like frowned upon. I yeah. mean, especially single guys. There's a lot of like heteronormativity. And, I don't know. If uh, they're wearing a black ring on their, way, on their right hand, they might as well call them a swinger. That, I didn't know that was of, a thing. That's kind of like the swinger code. I didn't know that at all. Huh. Yeah, that you can find them. Like they'll wear like a black stainless steel ring. That's kind Interesting. of a signal. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, I, I don't know. Like, yeah, I, I can see what you're saying. Like, it's it's about the love. And I do get super annoyed because, like, I've talked about polyamory publicly and stuff. And then, like, no matter what you actually say in those things, people hear it or they see the title and they're like, oh, Stephanie wants to fuck me. You know, she wants to fuck everybody. Yeah. <laughs> and that's <laughs> not true. It's no, not what I want. <laughs> no, I, I, I completely agree where it's like I, I actually enjoy having multiple loving relationships, like whatever works, works. Um, and people are like, oh, you just, it's just all about sex and whatnot. It's not, that's not it at all. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Well, you know, if there's not like sex to hold it together, like having one relationship can be complicated enough. Like, Very it, true. I feel like I'm, I'm totally sympathetic to polyamory. Like I even would probably consider myself poly, but it's like, I don't know. I, I feel like sometimes, you know, giving like just maintaining one relationship and trying to take care of all your own shit and take, you know, support yourself and sort out your own issues is like, that's enough. Like that's all <laughs> yeah. well, you might have time for. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, I, I really can't terribly imagine what it's like right now um, because the instant communication age has really changed every relationship in my opinion. Um, but I mean, when I was younger, uh, I was going out with, you know, a woman that was my age, you know, 17, 18, 19. And then later on, you know, I was also at the same time going out with a woman who was, you know, in her thirties and, but they were both like long distance. We'd see each other at conventions. Of course I was going to conventions all the time. So it wasn't like, I mean, we'd see each other, you know, a couple of times a month or whatever. I was, but that's, that's another story. But, um, you know, I, I, don't know if I could have necessarily how well I could have handled that if they were always together at the same room and like seeing them at the same time and like living together. It gets interesting uh -huh. when they're um, like, uh, there was a, uh, my, I guess I'll tell this story. Uh, for my birthday, uh, my real mistress back there and my, my other partner at the time, uh, set up a uh, like a pub crawl type birthday party thing mm -hmm. we went down mansion and whatnot and uh, besides uh, us three uh, my other partner her partner was there and then his other partner was there and then my ex with her two partners <laughs> were there and it's just we, we all got along fine it was a great night it was awesome but like even then like before then after that you're around sometimes in the same room for extended periods of time with the other ones like before that, I used to um, keep everything separate. And I made that mistake. Like I made a huge mistake. Yeah. I was I was keeping separate worlds. Like their 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 paths never crossed. Mm -hmm. I rarely ever talked about you know the other one. I I told them like this is what's going on. This is that person. But I didn't have like huge conversations about hey, can you help me with this situation? What's you know how would I how should I approach what's going on here right now with this situation and whatnot? But I've evolved to the point where I have full honesty and disclosure about everything. You know, um, we uh, like me and Ann, we talk about everything. You know, we we discuss. You know, like like have a date. I have a date Friday, and uh, like we're talking about like you know who is she? What you know what what you should do and stuff like that. What's going on? Um, there's all of that. Was having that communication and being oh, yeah. able to be supportive of the other person, being happy, and vice versa. Like I've gotten to that point, and you know, e evolving to that point where I can do that, and it feels 100 percent normal. Yeah, I mean, if someone comes up to you and says, "No, look, yeah, okay, I'm married, or not married, but I'm in a relationship, and uh, you know, I can mess around." It's like, you know, we just, we don't talk about it. You know, it, it, that person that's sniffing the other don't talk about it. I think that's absolute bullshit. Until you hear yeah. from both people that it's okay, yeah. it ain't okay. Because then it puts the third person or the new person in a position where they can't confirm. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. The significant other. Yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, one of the partners I had, uh, she, she had a, a partner of like multiple years. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were just going, being poly. I'm like, I'm not going to date you unless 
you know, he is okay with this. Yeah, yeah, right on, know? man. Right on. And yeah. uh, he was perfectly okay with it as well. They both wanted to support that lifestyle. We actually end up having a metamore date where like we'd get together and over coffee and talk like once a month, like get together and talk about what's going on. Just have, sure. like, just so that we had a, like a form of communication just in case we needed it or whatnot. Um, which is really weird to do when you're sitting across the table, having a coffee with the other guy that's having, you know, that's sleeping with your girlfriend, <laughs> you know? Um, and you're doing the same thing. You're talking about that person and vice versa. It gets a little weird at first, but you, you kind of get over that social awkwardness relatively yeah, quickly. Yeah to where it just becomes commonplace and normal. Yeah, I, I think there, you know, it doesn't have to be like, you know, I don't think people have to keep constant, like the, the third, I, you know, I don't know what terms to use here exactly, um, but people should at least all be aware of, of what the hell's going on, you know, yeah. who, you know <laughs> what I mean, who's with who. What the who hell's and, going on and, here? And yeah, really, I mean, because I think there's a lot, you know, a lot of guys that will get involved in this and then they'll just want to, they'll want to pretend that the other guys in the relationship don't exist. Yeah. Uh, and and yeah. I, I think that is... They're like, well, the only way I can get a girlfriend is if I share her, so I'll just pretend I'm not. Yeah, I mean, it can get so weird. And I mean, that can happen the other way, you know, switching genders too, certainly. Um, but p there's got to be communication. Otherwise, I don't know. It, it's not polyamory. I don't, I don't know what the hell you'd call it. But I mean, that's more just a straight up open relationship at that point. Yeah, if you're trying to throw a blanket over it, how really okay are, with it are you? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Just deceiving yourself if that's the case. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. I, but but that's that's a, a commonplace attitude I think with a lot of people is that they just they want to com compartmentalize uh, all these different segments of their life. But I mean, you know, that should be a red flag because if you're com compartmentalizing, you know, exterior points of your life, what's going on upstairs? You know, what's going on in your own head? I mean, yeah. there's got to be so much compartmentalization. And I mean, if a person's not a cohesive whole, at least or, or at least they're working on being a cohesive whole in their own head. Uh, you know, you got to wonder what they're reenacting by, by being so secretive and all this stuff. It's just, there, there's so many recipes for, for easy disaster, I think in polyamory, but then there's people that can do it right. That's for sure. No, absolutely. It's kind of crazy because we've seen, the, it, it's weird seeing like, um, like there's a couple of different families here in Manchester area that are poly and they like, they, they're, they're like raising kids together in like a triad and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's like amazing. Like the, to see that and it's just normal place seeing that uh happening yeah know? yeah i agree you know something i mean i wonder about is like the family unit as we know of it um you know i don't honestly i don't think two people can raise a kid no i think Brian, it takes that's clearly just the marxist agenda yeah you are destroying the yeah, family i will it's admit the liberalism creeping into libertarianism absolutely Drawing the fabric of society. You got it. I, I readily admit that I am my, one of my missions in life is to destroy the family. I mean, because I, or reinvent it. Or not, maybe not reinvent well, it, but reintegrate it. Because I, there's just, there's no, I mean, I, ra I helped raise uh, three kids. Okay? okay. And I know, you know, just two people can't do it. It's not possible. You can't, not without sacrificing who you are, not without sacrificing your individuality. But I think if you get into relationships where you have three, four, five, even six parents or whatever, I mean, obviously they're not all biological, right? Yeah. But, you know, six loving partners, whatever, five, three, four, whatever, whatever the number ends up being, I, I think that that's way more in line with, you know, a way to raise uh, healthy children, even though healthy is kind of a judgment word. But So many Kids now have grandparents in their lives, aunts and uncles, friends of their parents, um, even step parents or ex exes of their parents or whatever. And, you know, nobody really like rags on that so much. But if the parents are in relationships with multiple people, then they're like, oh, it's bad for the kids when it's really not that different. It's more love. Know? How can yeah. you argue with having more love in the household? As long as it's, it's stable. You yeah. know, I think what kids really want is like stability. Like, I don't think if I were a kid, which I have been, <laughs> mm -hmm. I wouldn't want like a different dude, like coming into my family every week, you know, like that's not cool. But like, if there's more than two adults in my life and they're stable and they love me. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Like, that's great. <laughs> no, I, I completely agree. Like I, uh, if like when, when I have kids and whatnot, I know me and Anna have talked about in, uh, in features, like if you want more kids, add another person. <laughs> like, <laughs> I can't, uh, we need more people to do that because that's just too much time and effort 
uh, by ourselves. So we definitely need more people with that. And I kind of see it as a, uh, it's almost like a tribal thing. Yeah, yeah. To a certain point where it's like bringing back the whole tribe mentality from, you know, the beginning of the human race, I guess you can say, where like that was a, a functional way to raise kids. Well, it created civilization, arguably. Yeah. I mean, in some ways is that we got from here to there or, you know, from there to here, uh, based upon the fact that people, you know, adults still had free time to think about how it's like, well, gee, you know, I could plant this or I could build this or something like that. Um, But yeah, I mean, the modern day parenting, you know, to do parenting right today or how we've learned, you know, especially in the liberty community, you know, peaceful parenting is such a big deal. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I just think it's completely impossible with two people. And I don't know that I've yet to see like the parents that are quote unquote doing it right where it's only two people. Um, you know, I, yeah, I'd love to see these families. I know in California, I think they made it legal to where there could be three parents. Really? Uh, yeah, I, that was pretty recent in the past year. I mean, Not that I need the state's permission. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. there's a big reason why a lot of parents, quote, aren't doing it right. And I hate to say so. I wouldn't say something that judgmental. About yeah, like I don't like using else. that phrase. But like most people, maybe not most people, but so many kids just, so sorry, so, getting tired. So many people just have kids by accident. They don't plan it out they don't do it consciously and they haven't like solved their own problems and healed from their own trauma that they had as children before they have kids and then it's like once you have a kid it's really hard to do that because you're focusing on the raising the kid and the kid is like is going to be great at just triggering you into like repeating your own trauma and i mean that's the real solution is like getting yourself together before you have kids if you have kids and going about it really with a lot of awareness. No, I, I hear you. I hear you. Um, what about you, Shire? Do you got any poly advice? Come on, the, this guy's like, audience? you got poly advice. You're yeah, with like you, eight people, right? You, I mean, you, come on. Oh, man. Yeah. You got a stallion over uh, here. Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm actually on my second poly relationship right now. It's, it's very exciting. Um, I know, I've heard. I don't know. I'm just learning as I go, man. I mean, I'm you're always gonna... smiling. You got it's got to be exciting. Yeah, it's great. What's your secret? What's you know? I kind of I see myself as someone who just doesn't get uh, jealous. Right on. I just at all. I I I, I kind of see it as a choice, and I know some guys are going to hate me for saying that, but uh, that's just it's just never it's never been a really big thing for me. I mean. I think in the past, like when I went for like monogamous relationships, like way back in the day, um, I would get jealous, but only because like I was, that's what you're supposed to that's do, right? That's the social norm, when right? some guy's talking to your girl, you go over there and tell him what for. Right, right. Right. Um, but. Man, I feel bad for the other guy. Yeah. Analyzing it, you know, it's not really, it's not really a feeling that I want to have. Yeah. So. Well, another thing I see with polyamory and like to relate to the whole liberty thing is I don't own another person that's huge yeah you know? i don't own them whatever and t- if i love that person if i'm really in love with them and i love that person i want them to be happy if that means you know if there's something that i cannot fulfill in their life and they need someone else to fulfill that in their life and that makes them amazingly happy then by all means if that person's making the love of my life happy then why wouldn't i do that? then you're happy right yeah that's called the uh, compersion right yeah yeah well i think that yeah like that's nice and that's i mean that does work for some people but like Brian doesn't own me, but I care a lot about well, his feelings. I'm like very, I very, I feel very much consideration for his feelings. And like, if I'm thinking about starting another relationship or whatever, I want to make sure, I want to make sure that you know, Brian and I have worked everything out about that. That you're we like need doubly to. cautious, right? Because it's got to be right for you and right for you know you. Yeah. Like, with Brian too. Jealousy is like a valid thing. Like sometimes people do feel jealous and it's not always like some irrational, like you're flying off the handle. Like it's a valid feeling. And a lot of times it, it just comes from the idea that you're feeling left out or you're like, you're not getting your needs met in some way. You're not getting enough time with, with the person you want to spend time with, or you're not feeling hurt or you're not feeling included or whatever. So like, jealousy can tell you important things that are like it can draw your attention to problems that you need to work on in in a relationship right and there are lots of people who use polyamory as like a way to escape the problems of their current relationship or to a way to like fix try to fix those problems 
but it just magnifies them. You know, yeah. it, it's going yeah. to, it's not going to be a magic bullet or anything like that. And I think that's important to realize. Well, I think, you know, Robert Heinlein, not that I like to quote him too much, but um, he has a great quote where he said that uh, love is when someone else's happiness is inextricably interlinked with your own. And uh, I think that's pretty key, you know, like, I mean, that is love when, you know, you being happy makes, you know, makes me happy. And, and that's, that's really love. So, you know, if your happiness means, you know, hanging with some other person or whatever, well, okay. You know what I mean? Uh, but within that, obviously there's, you know, a lot of respect to be paid around, around the table. But it's still, okay. it's, it would still be like, like, I think if I just suddenly said, Hey, Brian, um, I'm not happy and I'm only going to be happy if I hang out with Susie over here two nights a week. <laughs> like I wouldn't expect you to just be like, Oh sure. Go ahead. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like without a lot of like discussion about it, you know, and I wouldn't expect it to just, just be like that. Like if, if, if I was becoming close with somebody else, you would know about it every step of the way. Cause we talk about everything. Right. Yeah. You know, well, it wouldn't I mean, be like a big reveal, you know? Well, if it went down like that, I mean, then I think the, the, the signals are there that, Hey, this relationship's uh, tanking. You know what I mean? Right. Like, like that's, that's a sign that if it's just that simple and there's not like, you know, an interest in what does the other person think and things like that, I, you know, then yeah, yeah I mean, that's a sign like of other issues, no doubt. Yeah. And that's one thing I learned uh, really was the whole communication aspect, like actually having those conversations all the time, especially when I got to the point where uh, sharing Google calendars, like there's no, I put everything in my calendar. There's no hiding it. Right. You know? And uh, on top of that, you don't want to ever, um, overbook uh, a night <laughs> unless it's on purpose. Um, but uh, that was, <laughs> but uh, that was like a big thing too, where um, just having those communication and like dedicating that time, uh, it, it kind of builds like those relationships up because you're always having this communication. And I would always find uh, great ways to communicate. Like, um, like uh, me and Anne, like we, uh, we, um, even though uh, like right now, like we live together, we still keep like, uh, a lot of communication throughout the day sure uh, if it's not via like a facebook message like we use snapchat and we'll you know it doesn't have to be just a dick pic you know it can be like a smiley face or something like that like at work <laughs> or like hey i'm drinking coffee you yeah. know like some something you know like you know just say just uh, like if she's at work like hope you're having a great day at work like you know just Here's messaging my dick in the coffee <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> But uh, like finding those things and doing uh, doing things to keep the it's gonna hurt. Going. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah, it's iced coffee. I sort of just yeah, totally iced hell. coffee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, no, you're right. Individual. I think I think communication is like so key, and it's amazing. You know, when you consider that, I mean, the most heinous act perhaps that a human can enact is the killing of another one, and of an, you know another human being. And when you realize that communicate, you know, when most murders that occur are crimes of passion. Mm -hmm. You know, it is because of the jealousy, like you mentioned, and things like that. I mean, this is, you know, wherever you get those statistics from, it's so. But if communication can get one past those feelings, mm -hmm. uh, then, I mean, you know, in reality, communication could, I mean, maybe solve everything. Another thing, like with jealousy, like for me, um, one thing I, I see as if like a great solution to that is making the other person wanted and knowing that you want them and you like you yeah. care for them and stuff like that. That communication yeah. helps a lot and dedicating that time uh, to spending with that person goes a long way because you know that they care about you and they still want to spend time with you. Yeah, yeah, totally. That's the most important thing. Like I really think of like the people I've been in relationships with or I'm interested in. Like I, if they like someone else too. That's fine as long as I know that they're still that they still like me. Yeah, they you know? still have to dedicate time to you. They can't just you know everyone when they're free they're going to come around. That's not even a relationship at that point. Yeah, yeah. You know you have to have that communication. Well, it in might place. be for some people like a type of relationship. I don't know. I no, that, no, yeah, yeah. That, that's true. Everyone does poly differently. If there's if it's just like every once in a while get together, like you may have different. Uh, um, communication and relationship with different people. Uh, I kind of view like my my whole thinking of what really poly is has kind of evolved even more than it's more than just having like partners and stuff like that. You know, mm -hmm. it's like have, I always view it as where the people that you surround yourself with, you're you're dedicating time to those people. You know, friends, family, and whatnot. Like I kind of view like most people here like family in regards to like I'm dedicating time, spending time with these people here. Right. It may not be on a like you know, a sexual relationship or anything like that. But at the same time, if I'm dedicating someone, we're, I'm, I'm scheduling something, hey, we're going to go, you know, hang out this night, we're going to do this or something like that. 
just dedicating that time to someone else is just as much you know, as poly as anything else. I'm dedicating that time to that person. I'm dedicating that time to that person, regardless if it's a partner or not. Yeah, that was something that really, like, when I realized, I mean, and, and I realized being, I guess I'll say poly, you know, pretty young as a teenager, just because I recognized how deeply I felt about my friends. And these weren't even people I was attracted to, but mm-hmm. just like people that I knew, look, there's nothing I wouldn't do for this person. Like, and, and what more can you say about love than that, right? And when I realized that I could have multiple friends that I felt that way about, it's like, well, then why is, you know, why is love, uh, you know, why, like, why is romantic love limited as well? Like, that doesn't make any sense when the deepest form of love you can have, you know, for another person could be had to, can be given to multiple people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's really that, that, that basic. And it's so, yeah, I don't know why it's so hard to express sometimes. It's weird because it's, uh, for a lot of people, it just seems like it's a, uh, not just, t- it's not a taboo thing. It's just, they don't understand it. Yeah. You know, it's kind of weird. Like, I don't know about you, but I've gotten, you know how people have, uh, when it comes to libertarians and anarchists and stuff like that, like the who will build the roads conversation. Mm. I always have this who will build the roads conversation in regards to poly. Like, mm. like the basic questions, like, isn't it cheating? Or like, you know, how, how does that person feel? Or how do you communicate with each other? Do they know each other? Are they friends? Mm. Like all these like normal, like, Con- like these conversations and these questions yeah, that are very you basic. Yeah, once fall in love with someone new, don't you love the other person less? And yeah, yeah. I'm like, mm-hmm. well, no. Why would I do that? No, of course <laughs> not. You know, yeah. it, it's uh, it's fascinating. But I get that a lot because again, I'm open about it, so I get these conversations. Do you ever have people me. get really mad? Like you're threatening my marriage, or like they say to gay people, you know, like what they want. Gay. I've marriage. been called a slut, like straight yeah. up. Wow. A lot. Yeah. I've gotten that too. You got slut too. shamed. Yeah. By oh. like almost everyone I work with actually. <laughs> wow. <laughs> when wow. I talk about polyamory, yeah. I would say it's probably um, easier to come out as gay than to come out as poly in some. In, oh, I bet. Yeah. In like yeah. work situations and Which stuff like ironic, that. Which is ironic because a lot of like non-monogamy has been huge among gay guys. Like not so much lesbians, but with gay men. Mm-hmm. It's been pretty standard practice before it was even really called polyamory you know <laughs> right right yeah um there's a guy at my work actually uh who was talking about this he's like oh yeah i've been in an open, in an open relationship for years yeah and that's just like the norm among him and like all his friends they all do the open relationship thing they just don't call it poly yeah i don't know if that's more of a uh i mean you can be gay and poly there's no reason why you can't be sure you know but uh, i would agree that's probably more of a uh a uh, non-gay thing to call, you know, they have multiple relationships as uh, poly. So yeah, you, it's a cultural thing. Yeah. yeah, it's a cultural thing. Are you guys like zero on the Kinsey scale, completely heterosexual, or do you have any heteroflexible, <laughs> bisexual? I don't like. I don't like to take a label either way. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but I've definitely had sex with men. So, okay. Yeah, that's a thing. Um, I would label myself. I never like I actually came out and say this on air or whatnot. Um, I don't have like an attraction to men, but at the same time, I definitely get the whole pansexual idea because everyone's a human being. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't, ju- I mean, I'm attracted to women. Uh, I don't have like an attraction to men, but at the same time, I don't consider myself like a, a heterosexual in the way in which everyone's a human being. If that happened somewhere down the road, I'd be open to it, but I'm not, I don't Maybe have you just attraction. haven't found your he-man yet. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, right, I can tell you right now, that's not my, it's, my attraction isn't there uh, like it is for women, but at the same time, everyone's a human being. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's how I view it. It's, and I, I, I go down, I, I'm, I'm definitely on board philosophically with that. Yeah. So I kind of, cons- I, I, I could consider myself that. Mm-hmm. Um, well, okay. So the reason I asked that is because I wanted to know if you guys thought that polyamory and um, let's say non monosexuality go together. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. For me, it's a big part of it because like, I'm, I feel completely happy with Brian, but the one thing that he can never be is a girl. And no, I, no. I don't ever, I do not want to go the rest of my life without I ever tried. I put on the dress. The it, just the didn't, <laughs> <laughs> it didn't happen. <laughs> what is, no. did, did you wear a wig though? That's the question. Yeah, shit. That's what I missed. There you go. <laughs> you already got the bald head. I mean. Yeah, no, it's, it's true. I mean, like, you know, I've seen to, you know, right in front of me, not online, like in real life, you know, I've seen two women having sex together and like, I mean, you're, you're like seeing the secrets of the universe. 
you know, in, in front of you. Like, it's just, there's no, a guy cannot deliver that. Like, there's no way, you know. <laughs> it's just different. I don't know. Like, it's it's hard to describe, but it's just different. I mean, yeah. not, not just the sex, but like everything about it. Yeah. It's like, I don't know. Like, it, this, that, that kind of like best girlfriends kind of relationship, you just can't have that with a man and a woman. I can't have it with a guy. I don't know. It's well, like, kind of the backtrack from that, though, I would say this. One thing I love with being poly is the, your partner can also be your best friend because you have that full honesty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're talking about your feelings about someone else. So, so like beforehand, if I'm, you know, because I'm with Anne and, you know, if my, my old life, I couldn't go up to her and, you know, and talk to my my girlfriend at the time. Like, you know, hey, I'm kind of interested in this other woman. Like, how should I yeah, approach yeah, yeah. that? Um, now I can do that. And, you know, I'm full, you know, we're both fully supportive of each other and we want each other to be happy. And it's like I have, not, not only do I have my lover, I have my best friend and the same person. Yeah, which is ironic because so many people into, into monogamy, and that, of course, being into monogamy is fine. But, I mean, so many people into that do say it's like your wife should be your best friend, you know, and all this stuff. Like, that's how you know she's the one and everything. But, yet, how could you possibly be if you can't admit if you you, know, to her that, that, oh, yeah, no, I think this woman's hot. I think, you know, whatever. Yeah, if you can't be fully honest with yeah. that person, then that's not really your, you know, yeah. you should be able to have full honesty with your best friend. You should be able to talk about literally anything. Anything, yeah. Yeah. Well, the other reason I asked about that was because, shit, I forgot. You love- <laughs> <laughs> I think it's time to get you home. Oh, okay. No. I remembered it. So people get mad when I say this because they think it sounds like, like I'm trying to force people to like choose to be gay, which I'm totally not. Like uh-huh. I think people can choose whatever they want. Absolutely. Or can just express whatever they naturally are. Let's just say it that way. But I think for some people, like sometimes I just feel like it would be so much easier for some guys who are like, you know, libertarian guys who I just feel like they could have like an amazing connection with each other but they're like they're straight and they're having trouble finding girlfriends, you know, and that's what they. I, I want. don't know what that's like here. Uh, these these libertarian <laughs> men—they keep talking about how like they're they're having trouble dating and finding people. Like I I, I have no idea what I that's know, even I about. Know what I you mean? I, I, what are they talking about? I, I have no idea. <laughs> well, I hear it happens. I, I, I mean, that's the word on the street. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's great that it doesn't happen to you, but like for some people, I don't know. I just think. If they were just if gay, right? Well, if the, if they had any openness to having a relationship with another another dude, like there's probably dudes that they could really connect with and just be best friends with, and then maybe they would want to fuck each other, and then they could be boyfriends, and that would be great. The solution yeah. to everything. If you're listening, only if to they this, wanted yeah, to. Yeah, if you're listening <laughs> to this and you're not sure whether or not you're a heterosexual, go have sex with a woman, and then have sex with a man. And then compare. <laughs> That's not fair because then they're <laughs> representing their entire gender. <laughs> and then there's the people that don't fall in the gender binary. <laughs> right. And then, yeah, have sex with several of them, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys feel like you're, you're how, how do you feel about the gender thing? Like, how do you feel about the gender binary or like where you fall on it? I mean, like I said before, I, uh, I, I don't really see. I mean, I, obviously, you see and have attraction toward men or women or whatnot. Right. But I, as human beings, I view everyone as a human being, regardless of what genitalia they have inside or outside of their body. But what about you personally? Do you feel like strongly like I am a man? Do you feel like that statement fits? Sort of. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> yeah. I, I, not in a traditional sense. I mean, in a traditional sense, no. But no, I am very manly. Um, I, I, yeah, I, I would say I'm <laughs> but manly. Not traditionally but manly. <laughs> not not traditionally manly. Like I don't. Um, I'm not like that. Uh, you know, macho guy or anything like that. You know, I'm not going to like your atypical. You know, jock type of manly person. You right. know, but uh, I take care of my own shit. I I get. You know, I'm very super confident in how I act toward others. In that regard, I would consider myself manly and that way um but uh i don't that's pretty much the end of how i kind of feel like manly but i don't again i don't really i'm attracted toward women but at the same time i don't view uh as a difference between the two if that makes any sense 
No, it doesn't really make sense. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, I have attraction toward women, so I guess I'd be more binary uh, than, you know, than, but at the same time, most the average man would say, I'm attracted to women, that's it. You know, and I'm saying like, well, that's that's kind of it for me, but at the same time, it's it's not because I don't, you know, I, I there's a door open if it could open. There's no, that. that it's never been in front of me, but I'm not saying I'm going to take that, but I'm open to any possibility ever comes down through, you know, in front of me. If the, if the situation's right and it feels right, I'm going to take, I want to do whatever is right. and makes me happy. I'm not, I'm not, I have taken that like door off, you know, that thing off the table. I haven't taken it, but you know what I'm saying? Like if the possible, if the ever presented myself and it made me happy, sure. Yeah. But that's not the case. Yeah. But if I, it did, it would be. I've always said I'm hetero plus William Shatner. I mean, like that. <laughs> like if William Shatner, seriously, <laughs> if he said, "Hey, That's Jonathan Frakes for me," Jonathan, Rocket yeah, Man video, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or that Rocket Man video. No, anyway. Have you guys seen that? Oh well, yeah, William Shatner, Rocket Man. Yeah, yeah who hasn't? Yeah. Right. Well, I hadn't seen it until like a couple weeks ago. <laughs> I enlightened her. It's a you masterpiece. Did. I'm trying yeah. to enlighten Anne to Star Trek. She she needs to yeah. get a, a little bit more into it. <laughs> Shaking her head. She's like, I didn't know there's all this satire and and. and uh, all this uh, philosophy behind Star Trek. I'm like, yeah, there's a lot of philosophy yeah. and satire in it. Yeah, big stuff. Yeah, I, I call. I said she she was wearing like long earrings. I'm like, you look like a Bajoran. I'm like, ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's, what's, I, I, one thing I kept doing, I was I kept talking about like how like Bajor and the Cardassians were like real things, and you know, and uh, I was like, that, that, that's, that doesn't sound real. I'm like, I'm like, no, that's really real. No, it's based on like the Nazis and. See, I always, I always viewed the uh, um, Bajor and the Cardassians as like, uh, um, like Palestine and Israel, but mm. I don't know. Yeah, it, it yeah, can be. Yeah, Brian like, actually said that the other day when we were watching Deep Space. Yeah, Night. well, I kind of think sometimes I there's think a little it, satire in it from it. Yeah, sometimes I think of it more as like Russia and Afghanistan. I mean, that's like, probably a better. Considering it was the '90s, it was like '94. Yeah. Maybe that was a bit of a hotter topic. I don't know, but. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Star Trek, you know, it's tough because, like, it's such a well-realized universe. It's tough to not talk about it like it's real. Yeah. You, you know, I mean, like, and, and it's actually, it's a whole hell of a lot of fun to talk about it that way. Have you ever, um, you're a gamer and you're a sci-fi geek. Yes, indeed. Completely changing subjects. Um, have you ever played Mass Effect? Yeah, of course. Have you read, the, have, have you read the books as well? Uh, th no, I don't think so. You really should read the books and play the games in order. You get a better idea of the whole universe. I actually did that, but that game is amazing because the amount of effort that they put into like building up that universe and they oh, had yeah. like thousand years of history for like all these different races and stuff like that and all the satire that the, the historical satire within those races and stuff like and how yeah. they, everything about the, the game they built up so much in regards to building that believable universe yeah. that most games and most uh, sci-fi in general they they just slap something out there and it's not right. like they, they took the time and effort to like build up this entire universe there yeah, I, I always call Mass Effect 2, I call it the Captain Picard simulator because it's like the one point when you're Shepard, you feel like you can do anything that Captain Picard ever did. So, absolutely. Yeah, because he, he can sleep with almost anyone uh, he wants to in that game. Yeah, and everybody yeah. had on Picard. I mean, even Tasha Yar. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> That's very true. I, I would do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Um, well, I guess that's... Uh, unless you guys how anything did your, else How about. did Joel... Joel, Joel, leave the show. I want to know the drama on that one. And Maybe, now you're on. Uh, now you're on the after show. Uh, that's uh, like, a after after show at this point. That's yeah. the one <laughs> thing we <laughs> didn't talk about, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's an after after show. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll talk do, about it. If you it don't want to talk about it, that's no, fine. I'll talk about it. I just don't. I don't really feel comfortable talking about it on a recording. Okay, no. gotcha. No problem. Yeah, but we I love though that we there. we we actually got into the whole polyamory topic, and I I feel like uh, we covered a lot. Yeah, we yeah. Did. yeah, yeah, like to the point where this was actually the Rebel Love Show, not the Rebel Hate Show. I know, damn it, <laughs> yeah. I tried so hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we're gonna we're gonna end the bonus content, and we'll go into the bonus bonus off the air. <laughs> cool, <laughs> so guys. I do want to. I kind of want to talk about it. Yeah, it's right. great. It was wonderful having you guys come back down the match. You guys never. Uh, I don't. The only time I ever see you guys anywhere is like Liberty events. Yeah. You mean like Pork Fest and Liberty Forum. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like, we got shit to do. Like, that's the problem. We're <laughs> so trying to make I. money. <laughs> I understand that. Yeah. You guys need to make it out to manage stuff from time to time. That's yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, we'll see. You know, I had meant, okay, so I wanted to go to your pub crawl. You should have. It was I a blast. 
Well, I know. I want. <laughs> regretting it. I wanted to go, and then I want. There was another thing yesterday that I wanted to go to in Manch, and I was like, "Fuck, I can't go to Manch three days in a row driving back and forth." Mm -hmm. And there were some like really nice people that were like, "Oh, you can crash at my place. You yeah. can crash at my." But like, I never. I don't know. I'm picky. I don't get a good sleep, and if I don't get a good sleep, it's not good. And I just wanted to like, I wanted to be in my own bed and be able to work on my my work because my clients aren't going to stop emailing me just because I'm on vacation or whatever. Yeah. So I wanted to be there for them and I just was like not into it. So I was like, all right, I got to pick one and I already made plans with these guys to do go on their podcast. So we're going to do just, just Tuesday night. But I wished I had like a teleporter or there's like a bus or something. Well, and I could before go. we cut the <laughs> broadcast, we are doing another pub crawl. Yeah. Oh. To celebrate my first year in the Shire. <laughs> so make sure. When is that? Uh, this is next month. I don't have an exact date yet, but uh, okay. Well, I'm sure yeah. I'll see. Yeah, we're, we're, we kind of want to make it a uh, a monthly thing. Right on. You know, once a month at have least a for the call. summer. Yeah, I mean, at least for the summer while it's warm outside. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Cool. And then we one of the places you may love is uh, one of my favorite places in Manch, hands down, is Karma. Have you guys been there at all? No. Oh no. It is a it is a really classy hookah bar. In Manchester, <laughs> I don't think I will love that. To be honest, <laughs> no. I hate, I don't, like, I don't, don't do well with smoke. No, no I don't smoke. I don't smoke. I have allergies. I'm like super lame like that. I don't. <laughs> okay. I don't think it would work for me. <laughs> All right, but well, we'll then, still hang with people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't have to smoke the hookah if you go. There's still drinks there, but um, there's a lot of great bars in Manchester. So cool. But uh, come on to the next one, guys. All right, and uh, you got anything else to say before we cut this loose? This is ShireDude.com. ShireDude.com, VRebel.com. Go check watch out Brian. Watch the blooper reel. Yeah, watch it. Watch it's the, like this two. The, it's like this two blooper reels are on the Shire Dude YouTube account. Which has caused you a lot of hate. <laughs> that's Have they that's really? after, after, after. Show yeah, that's stuff. after, after. <laughs> is it because we're talking about Ron Paul BDSM? Oh, or? no. No, that's not even that bad. <laughs> that, that's, that, that, that's, that's, that's nothing. That was, yeah. Wow. All we'll right. get into that. All yeah. right, let's start the after after show. All right. Peace. Peace. <laughs>